6 p.m. on <clears throat> September 19, 2016. I'd like to call the Newfane Select Board meeting to order. Welcome everybody here, the public, BCTV, and the Select Board. May I have, may yes, I have, a, you may. I have a question? I emailed everybody today asking um, if it would be possible to change the Select Board meeting from October 3rd to October 4th fourth or another day that week. It's the, um, on Monday the third is Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, and I won't be able to attend. And I just wondered if anybody would be willing to change. If not, I understand. So we add that now or we put it in the agenda? We're adding agenda. it to the agenda now. We can add it. Is that yeah. new business? Yeah. Okay, we have to put it in new business. Okay, new business. New business. All right, anybody else need to add anything to the agenda before we get going. Hearing none, we need a motion one way or the other for the minutes of September 6, 2016. Mm -hmm. I second. Motion has been made and seconded to accept the minutes as written for September 16, 2016. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed or abstaining? The eyes have it. Road form zero commissioner's report. The roads are in good shape. Some have uh, some washboarding going on due to the dry conditions. We are grading those roads right at the moment. Uh, the crew has been out with the backhoe cleaning culverts and ditches. As far as the equipment goes, we've had to replace the air compressor in the 20, uh, the 09 Sterling, our favorite truck. Matt Coleman did that work. The chloride truck had some electrical issues. We fixed that in the garage. We have changed the York brake teeth on the front mount York brake, and we'll be changing a carbide grater blade on the grater probably tomorrow or the next day. The new truck, the new Mack dump truck, is has been at uh, McDivitt's over in Manchester. It is now at Tenco Equipment, waiting for the plow, wing, and dump body to be put on. It sounds like it'll be ready sometime by the end of October, with any luck. The Kenny Pond, we've been talking about this a few times. Uh, Kevin Schrader is gonna be here Wednesday to cut some big trees down that are next to the retaining wall so that we can fill in that wall before it falls over. Uh, roadside mowing, the roadside mowing is done. I had him cut some grass and brush around the garage and the wood line, that's gonna be a little bit extra. Um, he had a short section he had to do on Baker Brook. That he, that he had to come back for. But he's done now and he came out good. He did get a lot of brush cut back um, on the edges of the road, especially the back roads. Um, brush cutting, as far as brush cutting goes, I'd like to have Nick come in and work with some of the guys cutting brush around the intersections and work on some of the back roads. A lot of the back roads need to be trimmed back. We don't have to do, we don't have time to do much brush cutting during the summer as we're trying to get the rest of the work done. Um, this would be a good way to get some of it done before winter. He already works for the town plowing roads and if there's a tree down or flood work, so we wouldn't have to hire anybody else to do it. We'd just get him to do it and work with one of the other guys. Uh, as far as the white lines go, I'm expecting to see that contractor anytime now. I, I'm going to call Lee Chamberlain tomorrow from Dummerson and just see if he's got a, a schedule. So I, I'm expecting to see him pretty quick. Um, culvert project on Jones Hill. I've asked two contractors so far to give us an estimate on replacing an 80 foot long by three foot diameter culvert. Um, I'm going to ask one more so we have at least three contractors, but I would like to get started on that as soon as possible as the water is running under the culvert now, which is not good for the road. So um, I guess I would ask the select board what their pleasure is that when we get done with the meeting. That's all that, or the report. That's all I have for now. Motion to accept. A second. Motion has been made and seconded to accept the road forms road commissioner's report. Um, comments? What do you think we're looking at for cost? I don't. I don't know. But it's got to be done. It's yeah. one of those that's too big for us to do with our backhoe. Mm -hmm. So we've got to get somebody near the next reader. Dennis? Uh, just a comment on the uh, roadside mowing. I was not very impressed with the job that I did this year. Oh, yeah. Most of our roads are not really good. Well, it was Willow Road, it certainly didn't. Huh. 
bench right. didn't do too well either. There right. A lot of high areas that you just missed. Deal with that. Um, also, I want to know if the truck sign that was down, truck sign came sign, um, if it's back down, that's a problem. Next day, we put it back up next right. morning. Thank you. So, what is the board's pleasure with hiring Nick, number one? I think it's a good idea. To brush cutting done. Back. Anybody else? No problem with it? Or? No problem. All right. And what about the uh, culvert project on Jones Hill? What do we want to do there? I've asked Mike and I've uh, asked Clarks. Yeah. I got to ask one more. I do like the idea of having three. Mm -hmm. Just that we got to get on with it here pretty quick. Okay. Right. So if I get the three, I may. Yeah, after you get the three prices, you make a decision. Right. Email, have Shane and email everybody what the That'd be prices fun. are mm -hmm. so we can get on with it. We, the town bought the culvert. So we've got the culvert and we're going to buy the uh, headers for both of it. So it's basically just digging it. Mm -hmm. We can supply the gravel. So, But when we looked at it with our backhoe, it's just not, we're not going to be able to do it with that. It's too small. So. Anybody else got any comments? Hearing none, all those in favor of the Road Foreman's Road Commissioner's report signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed or abstaining? I'm abstaining. Green lanterns, green lantern here. Yes, yes. 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 Why don't you come up for? Do you want to fill them in? What with the attorney or? You could give them one of the copies. You got somebody got a copy of that? Yep, can do somewhere yes. there. Sure. I can answer any questions. Basically, what green lantern is is they he would like to he is looking into the possibility of putting solar on the landfill and. You can explain it to these people who don't know if you'd like just how it goes about it. Just a summary. Sure. Well, um, there are around Vermont um, a number of lands that already have been used for solar development. And one of the biggest ones that's uh, currently on the way is at, is at Wyndham Solid Waste in Brattleboro. Um, so we're following suit. I mean, we're doing the same sort of thing as a lot of other solar developers. And um, a few months ago, I drove by the, the uh, closed landfill on Brown's or Brown Brown's Road. And it looked appropriate. So we've done a little bit of uh, sort of desk research. I've looked into water monitoring records. Um, we, we did a, uh, just kind of a mock-up of what an array would look at. Look like basically just imagine a 150 kilowatt array on the uh, landfill itself. And the reason that we're much more interested in this than we would have been maybe six, six months ago is that the regulations, the Public Service Board regulation governing, governing net metering has changed. It's called Rule 5.100. And uh, among other things, it is steering us much more definitely toward gravel pits, sand pits, quarries, landfills, brownfield sites, and other kinds of disturbed land uh, instead of you know, the sort of general development of all kinds of different fields and pastures for solar that's been the norm over the past five or six years. So um, I was here, I don't remember what the date was, but a couple of months ago mm -hmm. at this meeting, and um, we've submitted a letter uh, requesting a, an option to lease so we can at least commit the resources to evaluating the site to see if it's, if it's really viable. Like we suspect it is, but we don't know for sure. Um, and uh, so there's a letter, an option to lease, and then a, an earlier version of this picture. And uh, I and I'm wondering if that could be passed around uh, to our guests. Sure, in fact, I'll pass the better one around okay. since you want to see it. Okay. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have and, and hope that you would like to go ahead and at least um, sign an option so we can research this. Well, I think... You can read the response from where? Would, would you like to read the response from the attorney? Okay. Um, this is from our from the town attorney. We had right, we did it. check with the town attorney on this. And this is dated September 2nd. Regarding proposed option to lease agreement with Green Lantern Development, LLC. Dear Shannon, I am writing regarding my review of the proposed option to lease agreement presented to the town by Green Lantern Development, LLC, pertaining to the property owned by the town located on Browns Road. I have the following comments. One, first, this is an option agreement rather than an actual lease. In the event Green Lantern uh, elected to exercise the option, Green Lantern and the town still have to work in good faith to negotiate a 20-year lease. 
Although the base rate lease amounts are set out in the option, the remaining terms of such a lease would have to be mutually agreeable. This is a good thing for the town and gives the town some protection against the inclusion of unreasonable terms in the agreement. Two, the town has specific authority under the Vermont statutes, Title 24, 2403, which provides that the selectmen may lease such lands as they deem beneficial and that the rents received from such lease are paid to the town treasury. Three, I understand this is uh, the property currently used as its landfill. Perhaps closed landfill. Uh, assuming the town intends to continue to use the property as its landfill, I would suggest adding an additional numbered section to the option agreement, which provides that the town of Newfane and Green Lantern Development understand that the lease of the premises would be subject to the town's continued use of the premises located on Browns Road as a town landfill. Four, I would also suggest adding the following additional numbered paragraph to the option agreement. Four, Green Lantern Development agrees that in the event it exercises its option and the parties enter into a lease agreement, the lease agreement shall, at the town's option, provide that the town will have the first opportunity to purchase electricity um, though any net metering or through any net metering agreements. End of quote. This language in the lease agreement would give the town at least the opportunity to purchase electricity generated from the solar operation at rates that may be substantially better than what the town is paying. Other than the above comments, I did not have any concerns regarding the proposed option agreement. Please let me know if the select board has any further questions. Richard C. Carroll. Is this the first time you've seen, heard this or seen it? It is, yes. but everything's completely consistent with, with uh, the way we normally do this. Is anybody from the board have any questions? How much do you think this will cost? To install? Yeah. It costs the town to install. Oh, uh, it won't cost the town anything to install. Um, what, what we would, I mean, it, it would be approximately something on the order of six to seven hundred thousand dollars to admit, mm -hmm. but uh, the town would not be responsible for it. And how much revenue would be derived from it? Well, that's what we would have to negotiate. Um, it would be in the thousands per year, mm -hmm. um, and I can't give you an exact number right now, but it would be something that we would negotiate. Uh, there is a number in the uh, option to lease, but it's not a binding number, it's just sort of a Target Anybody from the public? Gary? Look this to who's please. No. Okay. Uh, Ken Esty. Uh, environmental impact. Uh, what kinds of provisions, either in the lease or not in the lease, uh, pertain to that matter? And say at the end of the lease agreement, um, the cleanup. How does that, uh, does that get factored into the negotiation with the lease, or is that something that can be discussed even now? So, two things. Um, as far as environmental impacts are concerned, um, we would apply to the Public Service Board for a certificate of public good to <coughs> operate the, the solar plant. And that would go through the same checklist of environmental and aesthetic and historical and so forth concerns as Act 250. It wouldn't be evaluated in the same way as Act 250, but it would tend to the same issues. So all the things that you can imagine, like uh, impact on wetlands and streams and headwaters and floodways and uh, Im impacts on habitat, deer yard in particular, uh, would all be considered. And um, one of the things that we would like to do simply with the option to lease sign before we even have a lease, is bring out a consulting biologist that we work with to just basically go down the checklist and look at all of those things. Um, more generally, solar arrays have practically no environmental impacts. Uh, and this has been documented over and over again. Um, they, they don't release any toxics into the environment. They don't have any moving parts. Uh, there, there is no chance of any kind of spill and so forth. Um, and I'd be happy to provide more information about that. The other, the other question had to do with, um, what was the second point of your question? 
remediation. Uh, oh, yes, right. So um, in the lease uh, would be a requirement that we decommission the solar array at the end of its usable life, which could be 20, 25, 30 years, depending on how we negotiate it. Um, typically, we'll enter into a 25 or 30 year lease, and then there'll be the option to extend uh, the lease another, say, five years or 10 years, if, if everyone's happy and the array seems to be operating properly. But at the end of that, we would be responsible for all uh, removal costs, the decommissioning of the plant. And what it really boils down to is that um, in, a, in a case like that, we would not even puncture the cap on the landfill. We would use what are called ballasts, typically big um, concrete blocks that would hold the panels in place. And they would simply be lifted up and taken away. And there wouldn't be any impact at all on topsoil or uh, there'd be no port concrete, there'd be no grading. So it would be restored to its original condition. You did mention something uh, I remember about tree removal. Yeah, shading is an issue uh, with every array. Because if you think about it, if, if an array is, is you know, angled toward the south, uh, in the middle of the summer, the sun comes way up, comes up way over here travels over sort of the middle of the array and then sets like that. But, you know, as the, as the uh, so that there could be some summer shading issues on these sides of the array. And then during the winter time, uh, the sun is, is going to be rising and setting much more toward the south. So there are potentially some shading issues at the bottom. Um, at this point, I cannot say if, if any specific trees would need to be cut to minimize shading on the array. But what we've done in the picture that's being circulated is we've, we've shrunk down the footprint of the array to a, a 150 kilowatt AC array uh, in order to, to get away from the, the tree line as much as possible. And I think we could probably shrink it down even more, you know, narrow the row spacing and so forth. Um, because you know, generally speaking, if we can avoid any tree cutting, we will. Um, in that particular location, um, between the, the, the landfill and, um, and Route 30, there is a stream and a wetland. And so, for example, we would be completely prohibited from doing any tree cutting along that stream bank or in the wetland. So I can tell you right off the bat that everything to the uh, east, northeast of the array could not be touched. But we, we look at this very, very carefully, and we try to minimize any, any tree cutting. And we have to have you know, a permit to do it anyway. I think your original comments uh, you were concerned about the sequestered edge primarily. Yeah, I just don't know. I think, I mean, you can see the shadow there mm -hmm. coming across the road, but it's, it's it, as you see, we've actually put the array down so that at this whatever time of day that was, it doesn't actually come out onto the panels. Um, we would look at that very thoroughly, and, uh, you know, you, you would, just to describe the process, uh, we, I, I said we don't go through Act 250, but we, we use what's called Section 248. And um, the entire package of information, the environmental studies, the civil engineering studies, the historical studies, and anything having to do with, with uh, a request for clearing, anything that ANR sees, goes to the town, the planning commission, the regional commission, all the butters. So there will be ample opportunity you know, at various milestones down the road for the public to see exactly what we're discovering and to comment on it. If we get a fire over there, because I just took this course, um, and there's been some fires and starting to center some of these solar panels, the arrays, oh, in some cases. where or who is going to, and how long is it going to take for you guys to get down there to shut this thing down? Uh, you know, Jersey's had three or four, and New York's had one where it's on top of these commercial buildings. And they started right in the center of the array and they can't do anything. So they've had to evacuate like a mile around it because of toxic stuff that's coming off the when they're burning plastics and all that stuff. Um, and the fire departments are having an awful time, not these arrays, but the, where people put them on their roofs. You get a chimney fire that gets into the roof, and we can't put it out because it's still energized. And we've got no way of putting it out. So they said one of the big things is to find out, like if you put the array up there, who are going to contact and who's going to be there to put this thing out, or yeah. at least get it to stop energizing? Well, I'm not the person to answer that question. Uh, Peter Edlund, who was our construction VP, would have an answer. Um, it's something that the, yeah. the fire departments are really getting mm -hmm. into a lot more because it's pretty hazardous for the firefighters to 
be involved in it. I have not heard of an array fire in Vermont. Uh, it's not been one in Vermont, but there's been several in Jersey, and I believe it was one in New York that yeah. had burned for hours and hours before they could even do anything. Wow. Yeah, well, I, I can look into that for you, but I don't have the answer on the <coughs> Gary? I had a question about the, um, the money on this. Um, what, what are the specific amounts that the town will collect in the lease? And what are the specific amounts that you anticipate being able to generate from the array? Well, um, let's see. Um, I can tell you, to start with your, first, your last question first, um, what the array generates is a net metering credit per kilowatt hour times the number of kilowatt hours per year that, uh, that the array generates, you know, delivers into the grid. We don't get a cash payment from, in this case, Green Mountain Power for the delivery of that power. Instead, they apply it to the electric bills of the so-called off-takers, the customers, that uh, sign up for part or all of the array's output. And I don't have a calculator in front of me, but I can tell you that it's basically uh, going forward for that particular kind of array under the new incentives. It would be f about 14 cents a kilowatt hour times something on the order of 250,000 kilowatt hours per year. So whoever could do 14 times 250,000 kilowatt per year, or 0 0.14 times 250,000, whatever that's going to be, uh, 30, $40,000 a year, maybe something like that. So there's a certain you know, financial product of one of these arrays uh, every year. Um, if we use our investors and lenders to finance it, then obviously they're going to get the lion's share of the, of the uh, cash flow in order to, to pay dividends and amortize the debts and so forth. Um, the town, as, a, as the landlord, would you know, be one of the, the ongoing costs of operating the array. And um, you know, exactly what number we come up with was, you know, I, I can't remember what we was here. But, um, you know, there, there is a number just to have something to, to begin the conversation around. $5,000 a year for years 1 through 10 and 5500 per year for years 11 through 20. Um, but we can obviously re revisit that in order to negotiate the actual lease. So you said it was 0.14 times 250,000? Mm -hmm. It would be 35,000. Okay, 35,000. Yeah. Does that equate to what's essentially the equivalent of net profit on this? Well, I mean, an LLC, a, a little corporate entity, is created for the array itself. And if you just imagine it this way, the only source of revenue is the, is the annual net metering credit production. So that's $35,000 a year. And that's, that's basically your top line. And then you have a variety of um, both costs and uh, tax credits that the investors, and, and also amortization schedules, uh, so non-cash cost, that the investors um, you know, either enjoy or have to pay for as it's operating. And uh, that's, that's the business model in a nutshell. Yeah, I have a question. The, um, I guess I'm looking for the benefit to the town. And as they would be receiving a lease payment, for the property. Yep. The, uh, the array would be yours, you'd be selling back to the town, mm -hmm. and then you'd be selling for a profit to whoever else. Why wouldn't the town just want to lease this themselves, have the uh, electricity uh, you know, for this building and other town buildings, and then sell the balance, and uh, let the town have the benefit of the profits from the electricity being produced rather than your company? Well, a um, couple, couple different components of that answer. One is, um, is I want to note that the array will also produce tax revenue for the town and tax revenue for the state. Um, it's a, what we're imagining is a 150 kilowatt array, uh, AC. And uh, it's $4 a watt to the state, so that's uh, uh, $600 a year to the state education fund. Um, the, there's a slightly more complicated calculation that has to do with the town tax rate that's done to figure out the town solar tax. But uh, in this particular case, you know, it would probably be somewhere between six and $800 a year going to the town as, uh, as property tax revenue. 
regardless of what it's what it's on top of. So that's one thing. I would just have a suggestion to the board. I, I would think it would be wise to look into the town leasing this array themselves and seeing what you know, look at this both ways, because there may be an opportunity here for the town to profit from this array considerably more than a little bit of rent that it receives. I, I don't know what this building costs, but you'd have free electricity for this building. You could sell the balance of whatever numbers this gentleman quoted. Uh, I don't know what that, the value of that would be, and I think you might find out that would be much greater than what you'd receive in taxes uh, from this company and I think it's just something that should be looked into. Gary. Can I add one more thing to it? the other? The other piece is that, um, I mean, what you describe could be done. You'd have to find somebody to finance it and build it, and then lease it to the town, and then the town, you know, like like leasing any asset, a dump truck or whatever, can then use it, you know, productively. Um, that is not something we specifically do, although. It's possible. I mean, we, we uh, have built some, some basically turnkey arrays for uh, other entities that have then taken over, financed them themselves, and operated them. So, you know, I guess we would be interested in, in exploring that. The other thing is that, aside from being a landlord, which is, that was the first thing I proposed, the town of Newfane and also um, other public entities around here, you know, like Newbrook Elementary is, is on its own course of trying to develop a solar project, but that would be another example. Can be can also be off takers, and that what, what that basically means is uh, being able to buy net metering credits at a discount and apply them to uh, an electric bill. So you know you might be buying electric uh, net metering credits for ninety cents on the dollar and then using that against the electric bill to bring the cost of electricity down. So that's another benefit. And we would, we could, you know, as you, I think the town attorney, uh, Rich Carroll, suggested um, looking into the town's uh, uh, also sharing, you know, having basically first dibs or, you know, first right of refusal on the off-taking, um, or the off-taking off <coughs> production of the array. And that's absolutely something we'd be happy to explore. And so that would provide another benefit in addition to leasing. You said the capital cost is about 600000 Yeah, off the top of my head, because our, our normal array is actually a 500 kilowatt array, and that's mm -hmm. a, about no, 1.62 million. And a 1.5 kilo, kilowatt array is a 0.3 of that, so mm -hmm. I'm just coming up with 0.3 times $1.62 million. Gary? Um, another option that occurs to me for the board to consider as you're negotiating on this. Um, when, when we look at the total amount of rent and the $600 in property tax revenue, we're talking about less than $6,000 a year. Probably, for all practical purposes, doesn't make a difference. If part of the deal was that the electricity the town needs for this office and the garage and rooms of the hall are part of the deal rather than having to buy it, it would make it a much more palatable approach from my perspective. I, I just point out one other thing. We missed an opportunity like this when they put in the um, big power station. Um, we could have negotiated with with the with the firm then to get all the gravel that the town needed. We didn't. So now Mike makes the money on it. I don't begrudge him the money on it. But the, the town had the opportunity. I'd hate to see us miss another opportunity like that if there's any leverage at all to bring in that kind of additional benefit for the town and the taxpayers. Good point. Mike? Well, that costs me a lot of money for the gravel anyways, Gary, but that is the point. But the whole thing is, like this, when he came in here about a month or two ago, I mean, what he's throwing at us right now is a hell of a lot better option than I heard that the school was getting. Right. I mean, the school was going to get 10% off the electric bill at 16000 a year, which figured out 1600 a year, and they were getting $2,000 a year rent. So they were going to get like 3600 it sounded like to me for that whole thing and putting that in that field up back. Which when I threw it up at that time, I said, well, why don't we use the dump? They thought that was crazy because, well, the town will get the money. It all comes out of the same pocket no matter where it comes from, school or the town. He's come in at, what is it, 5,000, 5,500 a, um, is that a month, I think, wasn't it? Or, per year. Oh, per year. Per year, yeah. So right there, they've already, you know, $2,000 more. 
Yeah, and that's going on the landfill. Oh, no, I can see. Kind of see yeah, but, I mean, this is just thing, the thing to get the ball started. But right off the bat, he was already you know, two to $3,000 higher, 2500 and you know, if this all works out, like you're saying, maybe we could add some electric bills or something like that. But that's really after, you know, this thing here is just a lease option. Right now we're just we look uh, into it and they come back with a better deal. You know, there's whatever. stuff that he's got to do for the state that's right. with the landfill as well. It's not just something he can go uh, use a landfill for. Would this produce annually? Well, it would produce, uh, you know, somewhere around 250,000 kWh per year. Um, and I think there, it's about 17 cents, 16, 17 cents kilowatt hour. It's uh, it's going to be around 14, 14. At, at the new incentive level. Yep. So I'm just trying to put a dollar value to what this array that that you own will be producing for your company a year. So it would be 600,000 times uh, 14 cents, I believe. Um, it would be 250,000 250, times, times 14 cents. Anybody have a calculator? Just, I'm just curious. 35,000. 35, yeah. 35, yeah. Can I make one comment along these lines? Um, I, I'm going to say this in, in the spirit of complete open disclosure, because I'm a member of the Brattleboro Energy Committee, and I, you know, I sort of live my life both in the commercial sector and uh, you know, working on behalf of the town on energy issues. And um, one thing I'd like you to be aware of is that the Wyndham Solid Waste Solar Project, um, which, which is being developed by Sky <coughs> Solar together with one of our competitors, Encore, um, is going to be offering a very, very good deal to off-takers that are part of the district. And I believe New Fane is. I mean, I know, yeah. So the, the, the first um, opportunity to sign up for net metering credits from the Wyndham Solid Waste Project will go to all the 39 member towns. And um, because we're developing this array, not under the, the uh, sort of up to the end of 2016 mm -hmm. deal uh, incentives, but the incentives that will go into effect uh, on the 1st of January 2017, we're just not going to be able to offer as good a, uh, an offtake deal. So if I were, you know, from your standpoint, from the town standpoint, I would look at what we can offer, um, you know, in terms of the, uh, basically the, the discount and the reduction in your electric bill that the that the uh, the landfill can offer, versus what you can get uh, if you if you sign up and get some of the capacity from Wyndham Solid Waste. And I don't know where they are in the process of being able to actually promise that and compare the two. I'm not going to make uh, give you any advice, but um, you know that's that's something that uh, is worth doing. And, uh, and another question is, do you know how much or how many how many kilowatt hours per year the town uh, consumes through different like this building and the treasurer. Yeah, we need to talk to our treasurer. Because we'd be happy to go through your, your, the electric bills and calculate them. That's okay. Yeah. Gary, that, that was the question I was going to ask. I think we've got to get a lot, got to get a lot smarter on this. Uh, there's a number of issues. There are a number of opportunities. Uh, clearly, we've got some sunlight we could use. Uh, this is one option. But some work has gone into it. And it could generate some funds for the town, but I think we need we need to, to get a lot smarter about it first. Sounds to me like a great idea for a committee. Gary's a chairman. <laughs> That's the vice chair. That's Gary, not this one. <laughs> Doesn't the chair have to be a member of the board? We'll give you, Gary a, is the we'll give you a chair, and then you can be the chair. De facto, de facto. Karen. Karen Astley, and not to complicate matters, but as far as the school <coughs> solar array project, now that company went bankrupt, correct? Supposedly. Okay, so is that going to move forward or is it off the table? Shannon, you talked to, didn't you talk to the chair of the board down there? I did. I sent um, just a request for an update so that we could plan better. Um, and he, of course, that was for the bond, though, and he said there is no bond vote. So, at least as far as borrowing money to do one, I believe they have to go back and do another vote. At this okay. Point because They're in litigation, I know. I don't yes. know what the right. litigation so, is. Okay. As far as actual bankruptcy and the contract, I, I don't know. So, it may not be null and void yet? No, it's not. Okay. So, and with this new proposal on the table, you know, we're all looking at. Mm -hmm. 
do we really need two solar array projects in New Bain? Well, the landfill's nice because it's unusable land. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where the school is, yep. is a beautiful piece of property that, as far as I'm concerned, you shouldn't have a solar array on it because you're Correct. going to clear out all the Lions Club old property and trails and all that stuff. Yep. Some year that school's going to expand again like they, like they have three or four times since we've lived here, and they're not going to be able to. Well, personally, I can see one solar array project, but two, is it necessary? So I think that's a question that you have to keep in the back of our minds, too. And not knowing what's going to happen with the school contract right. timing. Well, not just that, but the state's actually pushing these kind of sites. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's perfect. Yeah. Perfect right. solution for some of the things. Yeah. I, I think everybody agrees the site is a perfect question. Right. Right. Yeah, I think that's absolutely. Yeah, I think it's well worth going ahead with these guys and having them look yeah, into it, see what we come uh, up with, and have an option for them to give us more information. Chris, basically, that's what it. From an emergency management standpoint, uh, I know it's net metering, so it's coming off and onto the grid. Would a town have the capacity to, you know, bubble up, so to speak, should we have another Hurricane Irene where, you know, you weren't able to get where you needed to do? Where would the town stand on that in terms of all of its infrastructure buildings should we be on that net metering? That's an interesting question. And what you're talking about is called islanding. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there's a small islandable area in Rutland. Um, there's a, uh, I, think it's, I think it's called Stafford Hill. There's a uh, uh, big um, landfill. It's been covered with solar panels. And they've actually got batteries in, in two 40-foot uh, containers that are also hooked up to a local school that can be used as an emergency, mm -hmm. uh, emergency shelter. Um, and the whole thing can charge up during the day when the sun is shining and have enough capacity to keep everything in that little microgrid going uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, and there are more and more towns that are doing this kind of thing. Uh, I heard that uh, New Paltz, New York, has got some grant money to develop something like this. But it's not trivial. So, you know, things are not currently set up to be able to do that. But a lot of towns are moving in that direction. There are some practical issues which happen is uh, if this is making electricity and you've got an emergency situation going with the crews from Green Mountain working the lines, they, they either have to completely isolate us, which means we don't get the advantage when the power comes back on, or they can't work on the lines because they can't work on the charge lines. Oh, right. uh, I think we found that out in another town I was working in. Yeah. You can't disconnect from the grid if you had to? Oh, yeah, sure, there's a club. They have to isolate you. Yeah. Oh. But then your electricity is going nowhere. Right. Which is, I mean, if I had to, I had to. What? This, what's the board's pleasure? Do you want to form a committee? Get a couple of board members and Gary and Dennis. And <laughs> Gary said he'd love to do it, so. <laughs> I'd like to be the chair person. He was going, did you seem to like this? Like, yeah. oh, <laughs> I think a couple of board members would be absolutely perfect for me. Well, we'd like to see members of the public, too. Yeah, we, we, it's been very clear that we need to have more members of the public, our citizenry, be involved in committee work. Definitely. And so we need you guys to step up. I'd almost think it's a little bit early for a committee right now. Let's yeah, sign I think an we have an option. Let him, have, let him come back with a little bit more information. Yeah, and that's, start what, that's what the option gives us, is more information. Do but that. does that tie our hands for no. considering other options? I think that's what yeah. uh, the attorney said. It does not tie our hands. I know there is other companies that are interested, but we have talked to them. So. Well, nobody's come forward. No. But I mean, so like he said, this is just a, so they can look into it, figure it out. You know, like that figure on that 5 to 55 might not even be it. Might be higher. Mm -hmm. Gives him a chance to get together with the state and the landfill piece of it too, what we're going to do there. Gary? Um, if Mark, I guess my thought about other companies being interested in this um, reminded me that it's, it's always to the town's advantage to get multiple bids on any project if mm -hmm. we can. Um, is this the sort of thing where it might make sense for the town to say, hey, we're thinking about leasing the landfill for a solar project. Uh, we're interested in receiving bids and you know what it is you'd, you'd be offering the town. 
then it sets up the competition for Green Lantern with other private companies that might be interested in it. That that can't be bad for the town. That's true. But you still sign it here. I don't think it. Uh, I don't know. I'm not an expert on all of these wheeling and dealings, <clears throat> but um, I do know that before any company is going to set, pay a biologist to come out and do an imp uh, environmental impact study, before they're going to have uh, any kind of solar engineers come out and uh, before they're going to pay to get the final information we need, they've got to have some uh, good faith uh, agreement from the town. Well, the good faith agreement would be if you turn out to be the best bidder, mm -hmm. you've got it. Mm -hmm. But if, if we ignore the bidding process entirely, the only option you have, and it may be a great option, I have no idea, but the only option is one option. And it's my, my recollection over the years is that the town has been better off when we've asked for bids on anything than when we've just said, oh, okay, well, you know, let X company take care of it, and they'll do a good job for us. Well, maybe yes, that. maybe no. I agree mm -hmm. with that. Yeah, Ralph has already gone and done some work on this, and um, it'd be great to just go ahead and, and sign the option. But I do think this is, this is a very complex thing, yeah. uh, and that we owe it to the citizens to make sure we're getting the biggest bang for the buck Absolutely. for this piece of very viable land. After, um, after having the options uh, for them to come out, uh, they're going to give us more information. We do not have to accept their proposal, it, but we need that information to be able to make a good decision. So uh, after that, then we can uh, move on to perhaps another situation or another deal. But the thing of it is, is that we need to have that information. We don't have the funds to hire a biologist to do an environmental impact study. We don't have those kinds of funds. Um, um, I'm not quite sure what all additional information would come that <coughs> do you have to sign up an okay. agreement with? Um, I know when I explored uh, solar for my property, um, a person came out, they did the study, they wrote up the quote, they told me exactly all the pieces of information, and I didn't go forward because I had another structural issue of the house to deal with, but it didn't cost me anything. Right. So I didn't have to sign an agreement for them to come out. I, they just came out and did the analysis of what, what was different what the cost would be, what my benefit would be. So. Right, I had that same thing done at my house. Uh, I had to come out and do a study. But that's an individual homeowner. That's not um, mm -hmm. a municipality. Gary. Go ahead. But it, oh. It's a good point that you've been making about how the solar companies treated the residential property. Um, why? Do we know that that's not just part of the normal bidding process, that solar companies that want to bid on a project are willing and able to invest in in the testing that they have to do? I, I don't know the answer to that, but it seems to me yeah, that if I mean, you're doing business in a competitive environment, that may be one of your costs of doing business. Absolutely. I would think, I, I agree with that, I think that anybody in business in, in a competitive field is going to want to have the most knowledge possible, have the most research um, for their own use, because if they don't get it here, they know that for the next next place they're getting it. Um, the next bar, it's like, for me, it reminds me of um, when people are bidding for a house, for example. If you find a house you like, you can't wait till somebody else does an engineer's report to decide. You have to go out and spend your own money and get the reports done and get the septic chain. And if you get the house, great. And if you don't, well, that's part of, it's a risk you take. So I, my assumption would be that Ralph and his company would be doing all this research in advance anyway. Any company that was considering using that dump would have to yes. do the research because you, can, you must guarantee that the cap will not be penetrated. Otherwise, we've got polluted water and we've got real problems. So that's going to come with whoever looks mm -hmm. at this property. The state would never issue the permit if we allowed it to go forward without mm -hmm. that consideration. Yeah, I just want to make one comment that has to do with uh, 
the uh, lady's uh, comments a few minutes ago, which is that the permitting up to a 15 kilowatt system is extremely simple and streamlined. And uh, you know, if it's on private property and somebody wants to put up some arrays for their farm or, or house, uh, it's way simpler and much less has to be researched and then, and then submitted as part of the application than when you get up into the 150 to 500 kilowatt range. Um, and just to give you an example of the kind of information that we would be putting together, which you, know, you would have access to, um, we have to do wetlands delineation. Mm -hmm. So we have to get a, a you know, certified biologist who, who knows how to do the kinds of wetlands delineation that the that ANR's wetlands office requires to look for wetlands, discharge zones, streams, and so mm -hmm. forth. And then she creates a map. I mean, I, I, I go out to the field with her. Her name's Dory Barton. She works for a firm called Arrowwood uh, up in Richmond or Huntington. And, uh, you know, once that information is, is established, it's a key piece of intelligence about the, about the property. Mm -hmm. But we wouldn't, you know, without having something in hand at this point, we wouldn't bring Dory all the way down here and spend a day out, you know, putting flags in the ground and, and delineating the wetlands. That's, that's just one example. Um, you know, other ones would be, uh, we would initiate contact with uh, GMP about the, the grid interconnection. And they would do what's called a, uh, either a facility study or a system impact study, just to find out if the local circuit and the local substation are already mm -hmm. adequate or if, if upgrades would be required. And they would tell us what those up upgrades would cost us. So those are just two examples of the kinds of things that we, we do. Yes, we take a risk. And this, this happened to me just the other week. Uh, I had put six months into working with the town. Uh, and uh, it looked like the town, the manager of the select board were going to approve uh, our, our project. Uh, we had a signed option to lease and they were, they were going to, it looked like they were going to approve our project to go forward on the town of Cory. Well, another competitor came in and uh, the whole thing, you know, suddenly was out of our grasp. And that's unfortunately a risk that we take doing this kind of work. But the thing is, um, I'm based in Brattleboro. My, territory for Green Lantern is the south of Vermont. And if I'm not out every day looking for viable sites, then I'm not doing my job. And there's always a risk that some of them are never going to uh, pan out for us. So you're willing to accept that risk, that uh, we may use what you give us back as a set of specifications and then use that to bid it out for other vendors? Yeah, I mean, if, if we did the work and you decided to um, put out an RFP and then, you know, 10 different firms bid, and we submitted a proposal and didn't get it, I would naturally be very disappointed. Mm -hmm. uh, that's your choice. Um, I have to say that this, this, is, this is a, you know, I, I have a, um, a biased view, but when I look around the state at the towns and the school districts and other public entities that have decided to go forward with, you know, reasonably large scale uh, net metered solar projects, I wouldn't say that the highest success rates correlate with the use of, of public RFPs and public procurement processes because I see other cases where the town just decided to, to go with one particular bidder and, uh, and did not open it up into an RFP process and it turned out fine. And I can, I can think of other examples where an RFP process was used you know, by a, a school board, for example, or a, or a, a select board to try to eliminate all conceivable risk and get the absolute best deal, and the whole thing fell through. So, you know. Well, didn't you say you were involved with the Newfane down here, and then they went with the other outfit? Too? Well, I mean, Newfane was out very, Newbrook, Newbrook. was out very early. Uh, they, they were uh, out researching the, uh, the whole business and, and the technology ahead of most other towns and school you know, supervisory unions I was familiar with. Um, and they, I think they did everything right. They did everything very, very carefully. They did an RFP process. We were one of three bidders. We didn't get it. And then um, Sun Edison ran into trouble. You know, so that was just the way it turned out. Has Green Lantern ever entered into an option uh, to lease agreement, did all the work and the research, and came back and um, decided that it wasn't worth their while? Yes. Yep. 
Uh, absolutely. In fact, um, I can think of a number of projects in Brattleboro and in Jamaica and in Vernon and Guilford where, where this happened. In a lot of cases, it was because we hadn't we hadn't paid close enough attention to where the deer yard was located, for example, uh, or another case where there just turned turned out to be too much ledge underground for it to be doable, or, or that the slopes were too steep. Uh, in this case, because it's a landfill, most of those facts are, are more accessible. So at the end of all of this, uh, either the town of Newfane or Green Lantern can back out of this. Yes, absolutely. What's your smallest array? Our smallest? Yeah. I think it's, uh, I think it's around 30 kilowatts on top of um, Hilltop Montessori in Brattleboro. Okay, so this uh, 150 is not a small array for you? No. Okay. Um, most of them that we've built are 150 to 500, and then we built uh, a 1 megawatt and a 2 megawatt. Array. Okay. And, and also just a, a fact, uh, a statistic that might be, be of interest. We've, we have built, we have either built or are constructing with the permits uh, 52 projects around the state. We've only built arrays in Vermont, and altogether they produce about 22 megawatts of, uh, of capacity. And then we have another 15 or so that we're working on. Jerry, do you have something else? I, I just wanted to um, applaud the point that Carol made at the end of there that once this initial um, research is done, both parties have the option to, to say we want to do something else. Mm -hmm. And I don't see how that's any different from the board saying um, feel free to do that, feel free to bid when we put it out for bid. But I, I don't buy this um, bidding process being disadvantageous to the town. I understand what you're saying about school, and yeah, those things can happen from time to time. But I mean, your firm has the option of backing out at, a, at any point during this study phase. The town has the option. Why, why not play it up front and say, as you're doing your study, we want you to use the sharpest pencil possible, because you need to know that we're also going to look for other bids on it, see what's best for the town. Because frankly, I don't care what's best for Green Lantern. I only care what's best for New Fame Vermont. And the only other use I've heard of that anybody's presented for the landfill was to put in potentially a transfer station at one time. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's even remotely possible. We never even looked into it with the state because there's so many regulations to yeah. go with it. But well, we've talked about this for two years, you know, yeah. when you guys are all on the board too. And I mean, you know, I brought it up down to school and everything else. And, yeah. These guys are the first to come in, and they had quite a few good references and throughout you know this area and the state and everything. And uh, you know, like I said, it's a lot better deal than I thought Newfane was getting down there on that thing. And I don't like the idea of using that field up anyway. So um, right now, it's costing it was costing the town about four thousand so a year. I think for that landfill wasn't it for the inspections or whatever it was. Or, up until this year. So now, I mean, if we go and get something going on, at least we're going to start. Making our money back, you know, and in 25 years, you're looking at right. $200,000 in the rent. Instead of kicking the can down the road. I mean, we got to start somewhere, I guess. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I think it's, I think it'd be a good thing to sign this and maybe get it going. Yeah. Well, the if it doesn't work getting, out or what, you know. Yeah, the sun's not getting any younger. Go ahead. Well. Um, I'd like to make a motion that um, we sign the proposed option to lease agreement with Green Lantern Development as proposed to us. Sure, so Motion has been made and seconded that we sign the lease agreement proposed to us from Green Lantern Development. Development. Is there any other discussion? Does that motion inherently include the ability of either party to back out of hand? I'm sorry, what did you say? Does it I, I have also include loss. basically the option of us or them backing out at any time if we don't like it? Absolutely. It's actually, that's part of the agreement. Given that the vendors in both parties agreed to that part, as well as that the, the opportunity, the information that's derived from the option exp exploration process might be used to build an RFP that we become right. smarter and can that's make right. a better decision, which is more profitable for the town. Yep. I have no problem with this. Yep. Okay, we need to get moving on anyway, so is there anybody else? All right. 
All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed or abstain? <coughs> the ayes have it. <coughs> Where is the least? Thanks. Does it need to be edited with Rich Carroll's input or did you create a new copy? It probably should, it should be edited. Be edited. Yes. Yeah. If, if, I, if I can get a copy of Rich's letter, then I can update it and send Shannon. Sharon. Oh, Shannon. That's okay. Um, I'll email it to you tomorrow if that's okay. And it is, it is on the record because it's been read to the public. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you for your time. Thanks. Thank you, thank you very much. Yeah. The next order of business was the Waynesville Hall Committee, but apparently they're not going to be here. They had a need to go back to the bond. So, so Lynn from the Planning Commission. <coughs> Since I recused myself previously because I have a fiduciary potential here, I will recuse myself again. Um, so the, the first uh, item of business would be that we would, uh, the Planning Commission would like to present Angela Sanborn as a potential member of the Planning could, could Commission. Could you speak up, please? I think you yeah, speak up a little bit. And, and, and speak a little louder, please. Oh, I'm sorry. We all have hearing loss. <laughs> you want to bring Gary back for this part, please? He doesn't have to be recused for this part. Well. No, he's all right. Go ahead. He's fine. Um, the Planning Commission would uh, like to present Angela Sanborn as a potential member for the Planning Commission. Nice. Yes, I'd like to be a part of the Planning Commission. Very nice. Thank you. Be good. So you should make a motion to appoint her. So you want to make a motion? I'll make that motion. I'm going to second it. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to appoint Angela Sanborn to the Planning Angela, Commission. Angela, good job. Is there any discussion? I certainly hope not. <laughs> All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed or abstaining? Welcome to the Planning Commission. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's a very important job. I think Angela is going to be a great addition. She's, she's lived here most of her life. We're all her life right here. Yeah. New Fane Village. So exactly. It's good. So so the first item of business would be the Planning Commission would like to Working on a couple items that were uh, pointed out during the um, last town plan. Two, set, two items that were missing were um, the having the town support the concept of village center designation, and the other was flood resiliency. So, um, as we've reported last year, the planning commission secured an eight thousand dollar grant to. Um, do the work to amend the town plan um, to say that the town supports village center designation. It's not the village center designation application, it's a couple paragraphs that say, and I'll pass out copies that happen, um, that says that the town supports village center designation. Why, why we're here tonight is to just get some feedback from the board. Um, see if there's anything in particular that the board or those attending this meeting have questions about or concerns about. And um, so I'll read the draft amendment to make it clear. Let's see if I get to that part. Excuse me a second. The town of Newfit, this is, this is the, what would uh, be in the town plan. The town of Newfane supports the development of and intends to apply for village center designation for the villages in the town of Newfane, Newfane Village, Williamsville, and South Newfane. The village center designation is non-regulatory. It is not a zoning overlay, nor it is, a, is it a historic district. The village center designation process recognizes and encourages local efforts to revitalize Vermont's traditional village centers. Designated, uh, I'll call it VCs for village centers, uh, receive priority consideration for state grants and other resources. Commercial property owners in the designated VCs are eligible for tax credits to support building improvements. 
Um, that's through the accd.vermont.gov. You can see what those are. Village Center designation will support, encourage, and expand community interaction, enhancing the assets of the three villages of New Fame, such as the Village Green and Union Hall in New Fame Village, Williamsville Hall in Williamsville, and the Little Schoolhouse in South New Fame. Village Center designation will provide the opportunity to improve connectivity and alternative transportation options such as ride sharing, bike paths, and traffic calming, therefore improving the quality of life for residents and visitors alike. Village vitality will be enhanced by being designated village centers. The village center program provides opportunity for eligible projects within the designated areas to receive technical assistance and state funding. The program includes a variety of tax credits, incentives to help reduce the cost of facade and life safety ADA compliance code related improvements and some data and network installation and related HVAC costs. Eligible projects are given priority, this is a big one. Eligible pri projects are given priority consideration for municipal planning grants and grants from the Agency of Transportation, Agency of Natural Resources, and the Community Development Program. In applying for the Village Center designation, the town will explain how designation helps implement the relevant goals in this plan, linking the goals in the plan to the relevant purposes <coughs> and benefits of the state designation. The plan shall explain previous, current, and future revitalization activities. Include, it will include designation boundaries on at least one map. In summary, the Village Center offers the benefit of economical use of public facilities and services. We can preserve more of our forests and open space for future generations. Our children will have easiest, easier access to friends and community life in these small population centers. And being close to neighbors, citizens are better able to take care of ourselves and each other. So that is the, um, the draft amendment. So I'm gonna pass those out. Yes, would you pass this thing? Um, on the back of these um, is what the current, just for reference, is what the current plan says about the um, village centers. And just, uh, I'll pass this out. Gary, just a question. Um, everything that you noted sounds really, really good. I'm just wondering if we've stated this enough to know what the um, potential disadvantages might be of doing this. For instance, you know, to place any, um, any sorts of limitations on what the town might do in, in a given situation, or are there additional regulations that we might have to abide by if we, um, if we do this? What, what are the costs to the town of, of taking advantage of this? There are no costs to the town. This is something that has no disadvantages? Uh, as far as I, we've been able to research, there are no disadvantages. But let, let me explain just a little bit what, are, what, are, what we're going to be doing going forward. Um, first, I'll pass out. There's municipal benefits. Just stay with me for a second. I'll get that. Um, Oh, I'm passing out a list of municipal benefits. And then there are uh, village center designation program benefits. Here's an extra. Maybe I can ask my question differently to make it easier to answer. Okay. Does the inclusion of this in our town plan 
commit the town at all to any um, potential um, cost sharing arrangements related to these grants that people might apply for? The, um, if, the, if there was, I imagine if there was a municipal project that the town wanted to do, and, um, and they applied for a grant after they had this, they were already going to spend some money. Sure. So the idea what they would get off this. But there's, in this, <clears throat> it doesn't even commit any of at the villages to have a village center designation. All it does, all this does at this point is to put that wording in the town plan so that if the villages want to do that and want to go ahead, they can that box that's required by the state of Vermont is checked. And that's what we don't have right now. Um, I passed out what are, hang on, just give me a second. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get there. Um, what, this is the required path of a, 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 amending a town plan. And I will say that town plans have to be updated every five years. And ours will need to be updated by 2018 and to comply with the state requirements. Something has to be said about village center designation and something has to be said about flood resiliency. So that's just an FYI. So what, where we are here, where it's the, we just did step one. That's all we did, which is prepare a plan. Our next step is on October 21st to have uh, walk the villages. We'll start in South Newfane, go to Williamsville, and then go to Newfane Village. And with us will be the state representative, Richard Omori, who knows a lot more about that than newbie planning commissioners. I've been on the planning commission one year, and my other commissioners have been there less than four months. So as you can see, we're learning about this, as, as you do. Um, at that point, after we get to, um, we'll be uh, joining everyone at Union Hall, which will all be open, and Richard will have a presentation. We will hopefully have the expert on benefits and with us, and they'll be able to answer the questions that, that people have. We don't have all the answers. I haven't heard anything that's detrimental yet, and there's no cost that the town has to pay. That I know because we've asked that a number of times. Go ahead. Okay, Lynn, um, <clears throat> it says here on the first page, well, uh, towards the bottom, it says, in applying for village center designation, the town will, shall explain previous, current, and future revitalization, revitalization activities. Can you give us um, some examples of each of the previous? activity of a current activity and what a future activity sure. would be in your plan. Um, after I green, uh, Wyndham, well, um, Wyndham Regional Commission worked with a group of citizens here in New Fane and developed uh, reports for revitalizing Newfane and South Newfane and Williamsville. Uh, one of the efforts that came out of that is the uh, park and ride. Is what? Park and oh, ride. Park. That was one of the specific um, goals. Mm -hmm. um, so that was the previous For future one goals, we, we until we find out what people want in Newfane, we don't know what that will be. Because the Planning Commission's job is not to make this up. The Planning Commission's job is to find out what people want, to listen to what they want, and to build that into the town plan. So is that, so you're going to have these meetings before you send an application then? Oh yeah. The, um, if you look at this, look at this one, look at this one. Mm -hmm. Go here. So, Step so one these meetings are going plan. to, in your meetings, the three meetings, um, the it's, purpose of those meetings is to talk to the residents and yes. find out right. what revitalize, revitalization activities people want in now and in the future. Yes. Is that correct? Right. Okay. Right. And when we can, we, can, uh, we can have these printed for people to see what was done previously. Um, what we're, where we are right now is if you, if you substitute 
plan if you substitute amendment, um, and this comes from the states, this is their guidelines. Um, after preparing plan, which is the proposed plan, then um, we have not, we, we have not voted as a planning commission to, um, on, on the uh, plan, the, on the amendment. And mm -hmm. that, that's why I'm presenting this now, to be able to get feedback from people. Um, thank you for the questions. I hope that was clear, no cost. So um, I have another question. Um, there are other towns who are part of this now. Yes, many. Okay. Mm -hmm. So can you give me an example and all of us of a revitalization activity that has been created through this project? I will. Um, well, one might, might be a kiosk located in a prominent village location that can be used to inform visitors of local attractions such as hiking trails or historic long, uh, landmarks. Um, one of the things might be flowers, banners, or flags that are used to welcome guests. Um, right now, um, the group New Fang and New is putting up the flags, the American yeah, flags, that, yeah. but that's an opportunity for citizenry to say, oh, well, we'd like something that speaks to how cool it is to live in New Fang, instead of just that. That's just the concept that uh, you're asking for ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. I'm a community message board. We have a community message board uh -huh. in the town market, but that's it. It's uh -huh. not accessible. Another idea would be farmer markets, um, historic markers, um, highlight signs highlighting key village attributes of the village that can be organized as part of the walking tour. And I can send you this on a PDF. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I just didn't want to print them out. They cost fourteen dollars a piece to print. Yeah. yeah. Do we want to Chris do that. or Dennis? Can you clarify Hi. for me um, what I think I'm hearing you say is that you're looking to amend the current town plan? That's right. This guideline, as I see it, is your 2018 town plan as a whole that needs a whole revision in the process that that goes through? That's a great question because it says the plan, not the amendment. So if you substitute the word amendment for plan, it's the exact same process. Right. So you're going to go through and hold actual hearings for the townspeople to go through because really what you're doing is inserting this one page into our current town plan. Is that what you're asking that's to it. do? Yeah. That's it. And that's the process that we have to go to mandated by the statutes. And right. I think it's statute number 24. Yeah. Something. There's quite a, it's quite an ordeal to go through that, you know, as yes. far as the hearings go. Yeah. 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 But I think, well, I think it'll really give us a lot of information that we'll be able to use <coughs> going forward. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we'll be able to ask all the questions that we'll want to know for 2018. Although this is one step and one piece that we fill in yeah. that would be theoretically voted on by January to insert that one page. Um, we, well, we applied for the municipal planning grant to be able to cover the cost of having those meetings, sending out a survey, and, and I am for new commissioners to get as much information as we can for from people and new Okay, one more is anybody, then we got to move on. I just want to make a comment. I know this is just a draft, but as it's written, I mean, there's no downside to it. There's what? There's no downside to it. I mean, it's, I it's as it's written here. <laughs> Knowing that the devil is in the details, I mean, is there going to be more detail? I keep asking if there's nothing. Because this is just like well, a win-win. the town plan, you see, amending the town plan is only putting the words in a piece of paper. Yeah. That's it. That's all it does. And believe me, it took me six months to, to get that across to the other planning commissioners. All we're doing is inserting a, a page into the town plan. If people in, in Newfane don't want to do it, or if two villages out of three don't want to do it, that's that's fine. Well, unless there's something that we're not seeing here, I guess I don't see why you wouldn't want to do it. Uh, I mean, there's grants for the town. There's incentives available right. to business people who wanted to do something that would improve the quality of the of the town, and no cost to the town. It's almost 
too hard to I know, it's a little scary. It's like free money. You go, okay, what's, what's hiding back here? But um, right. as far as, as we've been able to discern, there, there's nothing hiding. They're, they're really seriously um, wanting to, to, to do that. Would it be possible to add? I talk one, a little louder. Would it be possible to add one sentence to the document that says at the end, um, nothing in here commits the town of Newfane to um, any financial contributions to any of these. Efforts. I can find out. I can find out about that. Because then the board, if you wanted to, you could, but there, you wouldn't be under pressure that oh, you know, how come you're not helping us out on this? Thing? I think I think that's a good that would be a good addition. I don't think it's going to have anything detrimental. Uh, so we'll write something that that for, that speaks to that. That, that there is no financial uh, burden placed on the town uh, in applying for this. Um, okay, perfect. So you're just looking for approval from the board tonight, or you want to come back with? Oh, if you if you guys want to approve it, we'd be like so major happy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so major. So major happy. Because yeah. we've worked on this for mm -hmm. we've had the grant for a year, so that would. I don't mind including as long as we put that the wording you want. Gary is talking about it somewhere in there. Maybe the two of you can agree on wording and then uh, we can uh, talk about it and discuss it among ourselves. And well, Todd out. was just saying that maybe you would go ahead and vote on it now. That's what I'm yeah. thinking. Yeah, yeah. might have on it now. Right. Yeah. But put it in a motion. Somebody needs to make a motion. I make a motion. To, to approve the new draft. For the village plan, right? For the village plan. Well, what we need you to do is approve us going forward with the meetings for that. Oh, we, the, I make a motion to approve going forth with the meeting. And, and I say that I would love to have it approved right now, but as far as going by the statute, you have to have a public hearing. You have to warn the public hearing. You have to do it 30 days in advance. And although I got really excited there for a second, um, we can't do it that way. So that's what we need. Okay. okay. Is there a second for the motion? Second. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed to abstaining. You have it. Thank you very much. Thank so you. we ought to go let Gary in before he's. Okay, Gary, where are you? Can we go out here? There he is. Unscheduled members of late? the public. Is there any unscheduled members of the public? <laughs> We're at new business then. Uh, Loan documents for the new truck. They're <coughs> right here. They are. And if right next to that is a sheet. That other one? They forgot to words. They wrote People's United Bank, but they didn't write National Association on the one for the renewal. So they just need that. One piece for you, So that. The, but the big one is for the new truck. For the truck. Yeah. Gary lost the penny. I lost my penny already. Long time. Well, that looks good. No, it's not yours. Do what now? I like that idea. That's not good. You really like that. Oh, no. 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 So, the loan document's done. The other thing we have to do on the new business is the uh, next date for the next select board meeting. If you guys want to change that so Marion can be here. If that's possible. October what? Right. Four. So the one that's that's right. that he can't be here. Todd yeah. can't be here. That's fine. You guys yeah. can handle it. Wait a minute. All those in favor <laughs> signify by saying aye. Now, wait a minute. Just those no. opposed are standing. I think I said aye. We just voted. No, we didn't. Oh, well. <laughs> okay. So, are you telling us that you are not available to come on Tuesday? The I am not. I have a Newburgh Fire Department. But he doesn't me. care. He's one less. I don't care care because <laughs> you will be the chair. You'll be one less meeting I have to go to. Oh, we oh, can't. Can't. Can can't be here. Either. Oh, Shannon. No, so okay. two people cannot be so, here. But that's okay. Well, actually, 
the other would be the fifth, <coughs> and that's it. If you can't do it the fifth, I understand, okay. and thank you for considering it. I have training on the fifth, but yeah. Okay. So, so aren't able to do that. I think Tuesday sounds really, really good. <laughs> well, no, without the without the chair and our administrator. There's a chair right there. You can sit right in there. Okay. You guys want to vote on it, or what do you want to do? Well, that's my discussion, and um, you can expect. Is it going to really do that bad if we leave it alone? Yeah, well, exactly. no, we don't have an administrative right. system. Oh, I see. Well, your work motion if, we, if we're going to change. Yeah, it was just that I don't like missing meetings, but if you can't do it, I understand. So what's the board's pleasure? Are we can, keeping the meeting at the same day? I think so. Yeah, go ahead. I think it's less trouble. You know, yeah. Otherwise, we're going to lose two people rather than just one. Mm -hmm. right. Oh. Okay, sounds good. Well, I guess I settled that. <laughs> Okay. So what did we sh just talk about? I think about? we should actually um, town office committee meeting. Yeah. 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 We'll do that. Right now we have Gary Helius, Carol Asher, Doris Metzl, and Frank Spotsman. Gunther has resigned and Shannon has resigned. We have interested people. Karen Ashley was right here. Mel Martin and Megan Monroe. Just she just sent an email. She couldn't be here tonight, but she is still interested. Megan Monroe. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I'm very, I'm very yeah. interested in attending the yeah. meetings. However, I will not be able to attend this meeting on the 19th. I'll hopefully be able to attend the future meetings. Thanks for your understanding, Megan Monroe. I apologize for giving you the wrong date. Oh, you can, yeah. yeah. I told everybody to be here on the wrong day. <laughs> Easier to point people that way. Uh, from our discussion at our last meeting, it seemed that several members of the public were concerned that we were a little bit too heavy on um, elected officials and members of town staff. With that in mind, uh, I'm perfectly happy to give up my seat because uh, Carol has the enterprise knowledge. She's been on it for a while. Uh, and if we've got some interest volunteers who'd be willing to sit on this board. Then you will take these three and put them on the board, is that you're saying? What do we know about their their capabilities? Do they have experience with this? Karen's sitting right there. She's going to introduce herself. Hi, I'm Karen Astley, and um, I'd be willing to serve on the building committee. I work for the town of Westminster mm -hmm. as the administrative assistant to the town manager. And since 2008, they've been trying to renovate our historic building. Mm -hmm. And Russ Hodgkins and I have um, worked together the last three years. Our goal was to get the renovation started within two, and we're hung up. We do have an architect, so, um, and it's going back and forth with the select board. And um, right now it's on the table. We do have a floor plan, but I have a lot of insight that I think I can add to this committee. Mm -hmm. Looking at a new building versus renovating an old building, and I do sympathize and um, understand the position you're all in, because I've seen it in Westminster. It's not an easy task, and um, you know the residents are the taxpayers. You know, so, mm -hmm. and I'm willing to serve on the committee at this point. And the other thing too is I just want to add that. I didn't know anything about a new town hall or renovating until August 1st. That was the very first meeting I attended. And then that week or the following week, we had to do a vote. I didn't see any information. And the only information I got was that very first meeting on August 1st. So I don't know how many meetings were prior to that, but I, for one, did not know anything. There was no communication. So I think it's very important that if financially you're asking the residents to fund something like that, it needs to be communicated. And well, someone needs to find a way to do that. For months. We they had were. select board meetings constantly about yeah. a day to come. Well, I'm saying. Personally, I yeah. didn't know about I'm sorry it. That you, I'm sorry that you didn't know <coughs> about it any earlier. So, but I'm willing to serve on this committee so more people are aware what is going to transpire one way or another. 
Well, thank you for sure. offering. Um, I, I decided to get off the committee, but um, Doris couldn't be here tonight, but she's willing to continue. I think it's very important that she stay mm -hmm. on as she mm -hmm. has all of the history of this Absolutely. building. Yeah. Um, she did say that she would recommend um, the board really stepping back and thinking about what the charge of the committee is at this point. Um, so what do you want the committee to do? What yeah, do is there like a write-up or is there's there? There's not. I mean, there isn't. we were charged with looking at a renovation and this is what happened from it. So right. now the, the charge might be something completely different. Right. So anyway, that was just from, mm -hmm. from Doris. I couldn't be here. Gary? Just a thought. Um, it, it seems to me that it's problematic to have anybody sitting on the committee who is directly and personally affected by the outcome of it. For example, I, I love Doris to death, but she's got a, a specific point of view based on the fact that she comes in here every day. That may or may not be what's best in the context of what's good for the taxpayer. So I'd, I'd much prefer to see um, average taxpayers in town participating on this rather than somebody who would inherently have a vested interest in one outcome or another. What does the board want to do? Uh, do we have, is Mel here? So, Mel Martin? we have Karen, uh, Mel Martin, and we had a letter from Megan. Actually, I think. Now, who's Megan? Uh, she was here at the last That's meeting. Um, and I think she came, did she come with you? I think she came with Sina. Oh, okay. She came with you? Mm -hmm. well, yeah, she seemed mm -hmm. very interested in, in working. I don't know really anything about her or any kind of background that she might have with buildings or... Mel Martin also came in, um, he couldn't be here tonight, but he did come in. Um, I think he is more, has more of a planning background. Um, and so he thought maybe he could offer from that perspective. Okay. What's the board's measure? Yeah. We have three names and we've got three openings, so whatever. But isn't he an employee here too? Mm -hmm. I mean, with Gary, if you're saying that <clears throat> you would prefer that Doris would not be on the committee because she works here? There's also Frank Saponsky's name. Yeah, I have the same thing. You, you may or may not be able to do that. You may not agree with him on it. Just means there's an inherent conflict of interest there. But they may also have particular skills which are valuable to the planning process. Uh, and and I would agree that particularly in, in Frank's case, but there's nothing that stops the committee from calling them in to say, hey, what, what sorts of helpful information can you give us with that then being part of the decision for us? <coughs> Well, I'd make a motion that we put the three on. We're the ones that are on it now. I mean, just like Doris, I mean, at least she's offered. I mean, they offered it to you tonight, Gary. You didn't step up to it. You want to take her position with you or not? As a member of the Funding Committee? If the deal is that nobody who works in the office would be part of the committee, I would at least consider it. But yeah. I prefer for other people to have a chance. Well, I think make a motion. I'm actually going. I'm actually going to make a comment about having um, Doris on the committee. She has a his history uh, of working for the town and all of the things that the town has done over the years and not done over the years. That is invaluable. That we we need that. I mean, she's not going to be making any decisions on her own. Exactly. Right. But we need that historical voice. And so I'm, I'm definitely wanting to have Doris on that committee. Yeah, Gary, I would like to say that <clears throat> I don't see a problem with people who are working in this no, building sure. being on the committee. As a matter of fact, I actually think it's beneficial yep. because they are in this building morning, noon, night, every day, where we are not. And they have certain um, relationship with this building and knowledge about it that we don't have because right. we're not here every day. We come in and out and we go home. 
And I think um, it's important to have some people on. I don't see, I mean, the, either we, um, we have a new building or we have a building that's renovated, or of course, there's also the third option of doing nothing, right? But why can't um, people who work here, I mean, they're not getting any money for being on the committee, they're not getting any benefits, they're actually taking their own time. They're employees here, they probably could have more fun at home than coming to meetings, but they're willing to give, <laughs> no, could you, no, seriously, yeah. so. If it's a question, I'm going to an answer to you. Okay, yeah, no. The, the issue of conflict of interest has been a problem in town for a long, long time. Every select board has said to deal with it and have conflict of interest policies. And the, as I recall, the conflict of interest policy is, is not just that there's potentially a financial conflict of interest, but there's a personal conflict of interest. I think that based on, on the history of what's happened over the last half dozen years, maybe dozen years, that, um, that, that employees who are working in the town office have, have repeatedly demonstrated that there's a particular perspective that makes sense to them. Okay. So they, they come to some conclusions uh, about the building. There's nothing at all to say that, um, that Doris or Frank or, or Shannon or anybody else who's in the building can come before the building committee and offer whatever thoughts and ideas they have. It's just that it seems to me that we eliminate the possibility of conflict of interest if they're not actually members of the thing. I, I wouldn't fall on the sword. Right? It's your decision. You do what you want. But well, I would there argue, seems to be a conflict of interest. I would argue that the people who work in this building, especially those who have special jobs like the listser, uh, are in the best position to know what their needs are. And they can share those needs with the committee as, as experienced and valuable um, witnesses to provide information to the committee. They don't have to be on the committee. So would you, would you feel better if they were non-voting them? You know, it's, I, I've said my case, you know, do whatever you think is best, that's all. Dennis? Well, I think that it's very hard when you work here on a daily basis not to have an agenda when it comes to the three options that we have here. Mm -hmm. One is to renovate this building, continue with the renovation, one is an addition, and the other is to uh, build a new building. Mm -hmm. We're talking about exceptional costs in, in all the areas, anywhere from the addition of 500000 to the uh, new building, which when you factor in the value of this building, mm -hmm. we're talking about $1.2 million. That's a lot of money to spend on a bu building that size. I think to have the town officials or the town employees that, are, that work in here advise the committee and give their needs to the committee, as Gary has already suggested, is the wise decision. But that somebody that is ha hasn't got an agenda here or is not going to be comforted by what happens within the building should be should make up the committee. Okay. Well, thank you for your um, expressing uh, your I'd views. I'd like to just measure. Uh, just to make a statement, the building committee's job is only to advise the select That's board. That's it. They don't That's make That's all decisions. our job is. Mm -hmm. We don't get any money for it. I've been to all three of the informational meetings, as you all know, and we don't get paid for this. This is just advice that we give to the select board. The final decision is the select board. It's not the building committee. Doris, myself, or no one else gets anything for this where my term is up in March. I may never even get to work in an addition or a new building. So I just think this is, I don't know, a little bit over the top conversation. Our job is just to recommend. That's all. And it's... Um, well, also it's to listen. And I think that um, I would hope and I assume that the people on the committee and of choosing to take their time to be on the committee are people who are willing to listen in addition to giving ideas and that they're not just going to be, um, you know, uh, forcing their opinions on people and not 
getting a good response. Shannon? I think that's this in particular is why it's very important for the select board to pick a charge for the committee. Because at this point, I don't see where the committee is helping anyone decide whether it's a new building or a renovation or nothing. That job is done. So you need to move on and find out what their next job is. But um, that charge has, has passed. That's not what their job is anymore. That's done. So. You know, I would just like to say that there, there's been a lot of misinformation that's been given out yes. by the committee. And it always seems to be to push a new building. Like at many select board meetings, at the informational meetings, the number was always $30,000 a year that's been spent thus far on the renovation to this building. That's not true. It's right. so spent about 10000 it it no. That's what they said at the select they at the Williamsville Hall meeting. They said they spent $130,000. You later corrected that I did correct after that. I contacted you, but I never heard that correction go out to and, the and uh, you're absolutely right and part of my job tonight is to say that we had used the number 130,000 which was what was appropriated correct to be spent but was not spent that's right the number that was actually spent is uh, somewhere around 68,700 and something dollars actually, actually it was about 53,000 well of the 68,000 15,000 once the plans the new building and the addition. So that did not go into the renovation of this building. So it's really about $53,605. So it's, yeah, it's, but it's, 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 it's not the number that people, be push, yeah. which gave me the opinion that there was an agenda being pushed here for a new building. Yeah, that was just a and, mistake and on my part. I think a lot of people felt the same way. Mm -hmm. And that mis misinformation, if it was corrected publicly, I know it was corrected to me, but I have never heard it being corrected publicly to anybody. It was just corrected. Yeah. There was a lot of there was a lot of uh, work done on this building. Yes, absolutely. And uh, I can share the details of all the work. I know a lot about this building. I've been under it. I've been up in the attic. I've been on the roof. Structurally, this building has been fixed mm -hmm. from the bottom to the attic, inside of walls. It's been ventilated. If you'd like me to read the details, I can. If that boy doesn't want to hear him, I won't. Um, the building, not not considering what needs to be done interior to the interior, needs paint and it needs a roof, and then structurally this building is sound, and then it needs somebody to come in here and come up with a design for the inside. There's a tremendous tremendous amount of stuff that's not being looked at here. For example, we have uh, two bathrooms, one with a shower. Mm -hmm. Do we need two bathrooms? Or can we just have one unisex bathroom? We have an upstairs attic, which is a catch-all, that is a, a room that perhaps the listers could be moved up to if there was an elevator installed where, the, uh, where one of the bathrooms used to be. There's many options, I think, here that need to be explored mm -hmm. before we jump in to a $1.2 million project. And Dennis, can I just say, um, that I disagree with you that we were really pushing, that we as a select board were pushing this because you were on the select board last year. You were very kind enough to step in when there was a vacancy and you were extremely helpful all along in these conversations. And I think Todd and I, I think we all had questions about it at, at one point or another. We were not a unified group saying, oh, let's go get a new building. A lot of us had considerations all along the way, and we've discussed it, and you were in on those meetings too. And even when we went to the informational meetings, um, uh, we were, you know, we had independent thoughts, and then we were talking as a select board, but we were there to listen to people. And I, I didn't feel that we were there to push a new building on anybody that's what do you think i think we need to move on i think we've heard everyone and thank you very much for sharing right we we, oh, we got one more and then that's it but we yeah, have I think to get to the meeting so, right oh you're the meeting oh sorry Two people darn hired david cotton to do an analysis of this building and he came up with 
all the problems that this building had were the handicap ramp, with the bathrooms in the back, the ADA the compliance. And then the whole thing mushroomed over into selling this building and building a new one next door. I was asked to be on this building committee by David Cotton, and so was Doris, because of my knowledge of the building business. If you people don't think you need my services, I'll be more than happy to step aside. This is what I've done all my life. I would just as soon remodel this building as build a new one. We already own it. It's already here. It's been insulated. I did the insulation. So I'm not against it. I don't think that the building committee tried to push anything. I think if you're going to have another building committee, you need to appoint a chairman to yeah, speak absolutely. for the building committee. Mm -hmm. All right? Because David Cotton was criticized. Some people crit told me about it. He's almost like he's pushing for work for himself. And I understand that. And I understand that it could be looked at that way. And I think he felt that same way. I think if you people want to keep a building committee and you want to do something, if you do decide to do nothing, you don't need a building committee. That's right. But if you want one, you need to appoint a chairman to speak for the building committee. Just like you have a chairman of select board, you have a chairman of a board of listers. Any, you need one person to speak. Now, other people throw their two cents in who don't really, <clears throat> one person, one person goes to the meetings and they speak for everybody, and that's the way it should be. I recommend Doris, but that's up to you people. You people need to appoint a chairman. Okay. Frank has brought up another interesting point that um, is, is part of what has compromised our situation on the, um, on the whole building issue. Um, and it's, it's related to what we talked about earlier about getting bids. Um, David is a great person, and I'm sure it's a, a great plan that he worked up. But we didn't put it out for bid, and we don't know what other options might have been. I know because he sent me a copy of it that um, Lloyd Bergman sent the board relatively detailed plans for an option that would have been to renovate this existing building. He never heard anything back from what he sent in. So the impression that's left is that not that David is, is trying to generate business for himself, but the impression that's left is some sort of cozy relationship because the board is only dealing with, with one individual rather than putting these things out for bid. It, it's just a perception that's created by, by taking that relatively comfortable, but in the long term perhaps uncomfortable shortcut of just going with the, with the one person rather than treating it as a strict business operation and going out for bids from the beginning. Well, I think the new building committee, what we're talking about right now is this building. There is no new building right now. There's nothing else. What we're looking at for a committee for here is just like when you guys are all like Dennis and you guys were on at that time, which you guys did do a great job, and all of a sudden everything just come to a halt. And everybody got off from the committee. We had no more committee on that. That's what I'm thinking all these guys now are looking at is this building. When it comes down to it, because right now there is no new building. Got voted down. So is that the charge that the select board is giving to the committee? Yeah. Well, I think we've got to do something with this thing because we just come to a halt. You know, like you said, we need paint, needs roof, it needs like they made somebody made a remark at night and he's cleaning in here, maybe some painting. I mean it needs a bunch of work. And I mean that's what you guys, you know, Dennis and them, which you guys did a great job, Mike Granger and all of them. You know, it's too bad everybody had to get off the board, but it was going in that step, that's the way we were headed. And like I said, how this escalated into new buildings or anything else, we're looking at a new roof, new paint and all that. We was looking at ninety thousand dollars, that's three years down the line. By that time you're looking at another eighty, ninety thousand dollars. So we said, well, well, maybe we ought to get a loan to fix it up all one shot, you know. Mm -hmm. But I think that's what this committee now is, <clears throat> we, when we get it going, what they're looking at right now is this building. Personally, I think what Mike is saying is the way to go, to look at this building. But as Shane pointed out, the board, as a board, needs to give a charge to this committee about what you want them to do. I mean, if, if you tell them to do what Mike just said, I would be absolutely delighted. But I don't know whether that's what's on their minds or not. Well, I think that is the thing once we get a, I mean, right now, they've got a couple of select board members that still own it and stuff like that. Really didn't have that full committee. So we get it all back in order. And then right now, this is our only option. They look at this to see what we can do with this, I think. 
unless all of a sudden somebody comes through and votes a whole new thing in again. But yep. this is the option we're looking at. Dennis, Chris. would you be willing to serve again? <laughs> I mean, I've been in this for seven years. I really feel like I need a break. But I, I agree totally with uh, what Mike what Mike says. I think Mike has the right idea and is on the right track here mm -hmm. on, on, uh, on what to do. And, and I will think about that, Gary. But one, of the, one of our challenges is the enterprise knowledge. Um, there have been people who have been involved with the building at various stages over the years, but most of them have left. And so the new people coming in are left with, you know, a blank slate. Mm -hmm. uh, they go back and look in the record and see the 30,000 years is being appropriated in town meeting. You add all those numbers up, it looks like that's what should have been spent. But the, the, the knowledge in the background is, well, no, didn't all get spent for that. Um, and I think that knowledge and that experience is absolutely essential to making sure that we do the right thing for the taxpayers of New Thing. Chris? I concur with pretty much all the conversation that went on here in one sense. It was the board who has the charge of what vote is presented to the people. And so if there was uh, people saying, hey, there, this seemed like a conflict of interest, I think where you're at right now is you floated the vote to say, we want to do a 1.2 million. It didn't apparently go. Right. Now it's up to the board to take the best that they can from all the people willing to offer this and then you're charged with taking a look at that and figuring out what is best to present to the voters. Uh, that's just the bottom line of it. And also to let the town know what the problems really are. Not over exaggerated, of course we could do two new buildings maybe, but where the problems really are so that the voters then can say, okay, this is what we got for a problem, how do we want to address it? And then you've got to come and say, we really feel strongly that this needs to be done. I think that wasn't done well, basically. I think that's what you're hearing. I remember back uh, some years ago at Leland and Gray when they were going through processes to do renovations. They had spent, they had a building committee that came up with a five year plan, things that had to be done and they had it all planned out for those specific things that had to be replaced or repaired. And they did a timeline and they had it all spread out. And that was easier for everybody to be able to look at. And instead of you know coming up with some huge number, this is our five-year plan. This year we need to get this done because it's our priority. Next priority is this, it's gonna cost that. And you, and you lay it out, and I think people would then understand it. This building vote that we had was very confusing as to what we were really voting for compared to this. And it just didn't, it wasn't clear. Okay, anybody else we're gonna get moving on here? Um, want to There's still a lot of room to air. I don't know, I don't have a second question. Somebody <laughs> want to make a motion? <laughs> these three yeah, people? Yeah. Or? Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's, Chair, it's Karen, yeah. Mel, and Megan to add them to the committee. Is that what we're uh, voting for? Okay. I'll make a motion to add Karen Astley, Mel Martin, and Megan Monroe to the uh, town office committee. I second. Motion has been made and seconded to add Karen Ashley, Mel Martin, and Megan Monroe to the building committee. Gary, were you stepping down or are you going to stay on it? Uh, if people are going to be added, it depends on what the public feels about whether there should be two select board people on the board. Um, some of the feedback was that there should be more members of just the, the, the general public. What? So we only had well, three people come forward. Right. right. Um, sometimes I'm not able to make it. Sometimes mm -hmm. the other person's not able to make it. And there does need to be a liaison. Well, I think we should put these on the ones that are here tonight. And then yeah. yeah, maybe if Dennis is there. interested, we'll then later on there. because yeah. Red Cross at Bridge on Accounts. Okay, anybody else? Right. So the question is the board going to also um, make motion about what the charge is going to be to the building committee? 
Yeah, we'll do that right after we get this. I'm gonna move the excavator in tomorrow and knock this right down. <laughs> Go for it. Let's get this one done first. On the That's the paintbrush. <laughs> All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed or abstaining? Okay. Do you want to notify those people for us? Well, the one's right here, so that was easy. <laughs> Does anybody want to make a motion to what to charge the committee with? Do we want to do this the next meeting? Do we want to do it right now? What are we doing? I think we need to do it next meeting because we have so much left on the agenda. Then I'm not going to be here. Well, I might pay the committee to all get together one meeting just so they get to know right. each other and they can all talk amongst themselves. Like you said, you want to chairman, put one person in charge to do the speaking. Yeah, and we can all you work. Want the committee to do that? We, well, absolutely. Well, I think you might as well make a decision who you like to have absolutely. as a chair. I, I, I mean, think that for the public, we need to take the lead and to set the charge for what the committee should be doing. I know that right. you know, I only got on in March and the horse was out of the barn by that time, but I never really knew exactly what our mission was. Right. Um, and uh, so I think that we really do, do need to have the mission statement of what this committee is to accomplish. Yeah. Um, so they've got clear direction, and the voters have clear direction as to what we're trying to achieve. Right, but I said I think they still need their own meeting first. And then they come back yeah. to us. That can happen at any time. I mean, like I said, maybe like Dennis, because he knows what we've already done and mm -hmm. what we were spending there, like we was going, <coughs> focusing on fixing this place up at one time. And but like I said, it all just saw some, like she said, like a plan for five years. The worst thing with the plan was also we was yeah. hit with a bunch of things that yeah. the five year plan wasn't going to work. You know, we had to do more than that because each item was more than what we was putting in each year. Mm -hmm. So that's maybe, part of what we have to do, though. Yeah, is we have to weigh in and say, okay, if we continue to do it year by year by line item off the, the general fund budget then some of those monies might get used for something else because yeah. that need and ends up being a higher priority up. and the building doesn't get fixed. But if we bond it, the money is set and the building has to be fixed and it's done in a much shorter time frame. And you're looking at the same amount every year. You don't have to line item for little the items that uh, we're doing now, a new roof, uh, new paint, etc. Can I just say something about it? The reason that I like Mike's idea mm -hmm. is because when we do it year by year, appropriate so much money, what happened to us as we were proceeding through this process, we'd get done with one project, not have it, have money left, yep. but not enough to go on to the next project. Mm -hmm. That money would sit in the capital reserve mm -hmm. and then it would go somewhere else yep. as yep. before the before the following year came up. There'd be a reappropriation. So the money was being appropriated. It was definitely being spent on town business, but it wasn't, yeah. and, and it caused, yeah. it just caused confusion. It's, it's very hard to accomplish something Absolutely. when you only have this much money to work with this year right. because the project may not cost that much or it may cost more. Mike's idea, I think, about a plan to just bond or whatever and get the whole project done in one shot, We're talking I, about I think the same is, thing. Is, yeah. is a much better recommendation. Yeah. I mean, I understand the other way, but unfortunately, with the um, the way we budget, and I actually think, and I'm sh Shannon can probably answer my question on this. I I think now that is a line item, where it does not just go into the capital reserve like it did in past years. Didn't no, everything goes into everything goes into the capital reserve. reserve. And even though you say you know fifteen thousand goes to this building, well, somebody else uses it first, or you pay a loan with it, and it's gone. Yeah. So that's that's the issue. I mean, you can say that all you want. You have a capital plan. No, you, I, you know, I I understand. You plan thirty thousand dollars for this, but then, you know, right. or you dip into the reserve itself to pay back loans or, you know, purchase something. And um, okay. capital plans are only plans. I see. Make sure I understand what's being suggested. The the suggestion is the possibility of. Uh, um, a bond issue to cover the renovations of this building. Now, let me just say something. Personally, I'd much prefer that approach to a new building approach. But I think that the, the townspeople owe the opportunity to offer their perspective on it. So let, let's say that the majority of the people in town would, would vote for a, a bond issue for a renovation. That's great. 
but not having the option of the new building or or continuing to just try to do repairs as we go along is is almost as confining as putting forth a bond issue that only deals with a, a whole new building. You know what I mean? It's even though I prefer the renovations thing, I would think that we owe it to the people to say, um, we've had this building committee, they've put in a lot of time and effort on it, they've come up with these three possible approaches. Continue repairs, major renovation, new building. What, what's your pleasure among those three? Then when the people speak, then the board can say, okay, if we like the renovations idea, the way, we, the way that it makes most sense to do it is probably to do a bond issue on it so we have all the money up front and we can get the projects done rather than run into the kinds of problems that Dennis was talking about. I think what we got to do, I think what the, me and what the town needs to do is figure out what they want to do mm -hmm. and then put it out to bid, see what we come back with for bids, with the bid, with the stipulation on the bid depending on bond vote. Mm -hmm. If you tell people you have $500,000 to renovate the building, they're going to vote $500,000. Mm -hmm. But if you put it out to bid, you might get it for $350,000. So part of what the building committee may do is recommend an authorization for a portion of money to be spilt, to be spent to develop specifications for bidding, and then do the bond vote after the bids come in. So he's got a little bit sharper pencil. We didn't have that option last time based on what the bond attorney told us. Laurie. Through all that process with the uh, previous uh, building committee, was there ever like a item list of things that had to be, you know, areas that had to be addressed here, and what and what the potential cost would be? I mean, you know, an itemized list yes. such as roof, painting, mm -hmm. interior. Yep. There was an entire feasibility study done. Yeah. It's about that thick with costs associated with it. I thought maybe I might have put it in my binder, but I don't think is that something I'm that's in. online? Most of it is online. The the big plans that were too large for the website aren't, but the first I think twenty five pages is online. I think that could be an excellent starting one of the starting points for the committee because they can go through the big document try to make some sense of it and then decide priorities, relative priorities, what, what's absolutely necessary to be done, what might be nice to do, but it doesn't have to be done. As a taxpayer, I'd, I'd like a delineation that way. You know, I'm happy to pay for what has to be done. Not so happy to pay for something that's just nice to do. So well, if the building committee can offer you their, their perspectives on that, that's all. Of course, we still have the issue of, do we have a petition back mm -hmm. or a revote? So Which that's still working, hanging in the air, too. We're so working on it. Oh, yeah. We're trying to Believe figure out what to do with it. We've been to the town attorney. We're going to go into executive session here in a little while yeah. to deal okay. with it. So that, that is still looming over our heads here. Mm -hmm. Are you going to take some public comment on that before you go into executive no. session? <laughs> Uh, if we can do it fairly short, yeah. short. Is that what but we should, you know? well, we should, are we going to charge this committee with something or are we going to wait? Maybe we should wait until, until we figure out what we're doing with the dish. I, I, I just quickly wrote down. Can I ask, will that affect what we're going to be in charge to do? Yeah. So then you can are we looking at both? Out. I mean, this petition. This, I, have, I just wrote something down which would cover both. Develop a plan for the updating and maintenance of the town hall. You've got all options in available to you. That's true. And the committee has direction. That's true. That's wide open. They can come back and ask more That's specific, specific questions yeah. if yeah. they want it. I like it. And I have a, uh, which Gary has a copy of, yes. I have a detailed list of exactly what we've done so far to the building. That'd be great to have. One of our, one of our, to be perfectly frank, when I looked at the renovation plan that we worked with, many of the bids were done in 2010, 2011. And when we're looking then at trying to sharpen the pencil yeah. for what it's going to cost, those bids don't really tell us a lot. But because the numbers are going to be different. Uh, and what we need to have 
is a set of drawings, a set of specifications that a, a contractor can look at and say, it's going to cost you this much money. We can put an escalator in there to cover any overages. And we can say, no change order permitted. Make sure everything includes what you're going to do in that number. And then we can go forward from there and not surprise the voters. That's, that's the big thing here is not surprising the voters. Gary, did you? I'm fine with all that. I'm for is that, that what we want to? to yeah. What Gary has written up? I'll to return. Make a motion. Go ahead. Make a motion to develop a plan for the update and maintenance of the town hall. Is there a second? Uh, would, Go ahead. No, I, there is a second, so we, we yes, are in discussion. I'm sorry, and we're in discussion now. Um, could you read that to me again? Sure. Develop a plan for the updating and maintenance of the town hall. And uh, updating, renovation, and maintenance. That, it can be any of those things. We're not going to tie a specific term to that. We're just going to say the updating and maintenance of the town hall. That sounds like you're, <clears throat> you're not um, discussing no. a new building anymore. Well, no, it also, uh, it also um, sounds like uh, updating. Well, until I get what is through, there is on the Right. What updating, is, what updating. Well, what about the petition? We're not going to tell the, the committee what updating means. means. They're going to they're tell going us to what, what's, what makes the most sense. All right. All, right. All those in favor, by saying aye. 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 Opposed to abstaining. See, that didn't take long. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Are we ready for the now we are probably ready for bond vote issues. Yeah. Meaning the petition. Okay. Gary. On the um, on the petition that was here, first I need to ask you a question. Was the petition in the hands of the select board by the deadline, or were you assured that it had been received by the deadline? We were assured that it had come in. Okay, but it was, it was needed to, in to me. Was it in your hands before yes. that? Okay, good, thanks. Um, the the thoughts I'd like to share with the select board and ask you to take into executive session with me is that we're dealing with a tainted petition over here. There's no way for anybody in the world to know how many of those signatures were gathered here in the town office with what appeared to be um, some level of coercion or at least um, of approaching people who weren't just voluntarily going out and signing a petition. If we don't know the number of those that were collected here, then we don't know whether the total number was sufficient to meet the legal requirement. So there's a, a question of, of how, you, how the board can deal with a petition if you don't really know if you've got a, a legal number of signatures on it that weren't influenced unduly some way to get them on there. Without I going into detail, because it's the subject of the executive session, okay. right. um, the question that you've raised has been presented to attorney, and the attorney has weighed in. Yep. Okay. Now, I'm sure that there's some element on the part of any attorney's view of this to avoid disenfranchising anybody. So one thought that I would ask, since there is no way for you to be able to tell whether those are legitimate or not, is to consider, if you do want to consider, continue pressing for a new building despite the, the existing vote bills there, perhaps offer an extended period of time for a new petition to be circulated with the understanding that no petitions are going to be collected in this office. And maybe the town officials um, clearly excuse themselves from anything related to that petition. We're then you know that what you're getting is what the people want. And that was also uh, touched on by the town attorney. The town attorney said it would, it would be out area. of, yeah, it would be out of state um, rules. We couldn't do it that way. The timetable is the timetable, and you can't go beyond it. You so couldn't you go have back the and ask again. Of, um, of, of making the decision that because you, you can't tell how many signatures are legitimate, that it's a tainted petition and nothing happens? I don't know if we can discuss it. We can't, here. Dis we can't discuss it with you at this point. Just because it is a legal issue. So we're held to uh, the law here. Client That's one of the things that we will be discussing. But client privilege information. Just, uh, just a general question on petitions. Uh, I mean, the vote of the people, I think, is the backbone of a democracy. And it should not be something that is easily overturned. 
and the state says you required a minimum of 5% of the signatures of the voters to, to uh, request a, uh, a revote. The select board has the option of raising that to as high as 20%. And I personally think, and this is just my personal opinion, whatever you guys choose is your business, but I think 5% to overturn something as important or to reconsider something as important as the vote of the people, I think is an awful easy uh, awful easy uh, threshold to, to reach and it should be higher. Just my opinion. Okay, thanks for that. Dennis, just a point of information for petitions for a bond revote, it has to be 10%. Yeah. But it can be raised as high as 20. I guess if they knew it was coming, they could have, but, right. or maybe create a new. I, I, mean, I don't have the statutes, but I did read it in the, in the statute. I think it's, I forget what letter it's under, but it is, it is in the state statute. You have that, you have that authority to raise it. Anybody else, Chris? I think what I'm hearing here is that you have, you, the board is in receipt of a petition. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, I'm just going to weigh in. Having sat on this board, I know I can kind of get the feel of what's going on. And you got two issues. One is that, and all the extraneous stuff is another whole matter. And that matter really has been before this board and this community for four or five years on and off in various different ways. And I'll just say, you have elected officials here. They have their own positions. They do their own thing. And the board can't do anything about it. So your, your hands are tied. It's the voters who must start to realize really what's going on, and it's their obligation to handle that part. So I'm just hoping whatever you do, you will remember that. Do. <laughs> I, I agree with everything that um, Chris has said, and it makes it even more important for the board to be willing to at least consider the impact of those inappropriate activities that have taken place in pulling this petition together. Um, and the role that the town clerk in this instance has played in the process. That's, that shouldn't be something that we, we blithely ignore or discount in this process. Because for all we know, two-thirds of those signatures could have been collected under duress. There's just no way to know. We have not been ignoring these issues. We have been um, very concerned about them, and we've met with, about them. We've contacted the town attorney about them. We take it very seriously. We are not doing anything. Well, I'm, I'm sure that you do. But you can go into executive session and not consider the taintedness aspect of that petition and come up with an entirely different decision based on attorney's advice. And you might get, if you present it to the attorney, that we had no way of knowing how many of these signatures are legit because it was tainted by the process. Well, I'm sure we'd have a right to go through the checklist to make sure there are legal voters, but other than yeah. to find out if somebody was harassed and deciding that what you're saying, like, is, you but know. You know that somebody's been harassed. No, but I mean, how would you find that out unless you asked every one of them? And the guy finally, one guy says, yeah, I was, you know, they, kept right at me until I finally did sign it. But I mean, you wouldn't know that. The only thing we could ever do, if anybody could ever do, is just check to see the, on the checklist of legal voters. Other than that, I mean. I don't think that does a service to the um, voters of the town, though. Because yeah, but how many would you, you have? How would you ever prove anything like that? You can't prove it, but you can't demonstrate that you have enough legitimate signatures on that petition to require a revote. The majority of the people voted one way, it's okay to require the revote if you have a, a legally collected and legal number of signatures asking for that revote. But you know there was an issue over here. And while you can't do anything about the issue because of the elected official business that Chris was talking about, you can certainly do something to protect the voters by recognizing that, hey, we shouldn't do, I'm sorry to say ignore it, but we shouldn't discount <laughs> our knowledge that something happened here that shouldn't have happened in this process. And we re received advice. Anybody else got anything before we go into executive session? Okay, I need a motion from somebody to go into executive session with Shannon because the town clerk can't be here. But she gave Shannon some. I was, all I want to do is hand you what was handed me. At the beginning of this meeting. So the town clerk is not here? She's not here. She handed me stuff that I would like to hand off to you. Okay. 
And then I'll come yep. back after. Okay. So Somebody needs to make that motion. Gary. Uh, I move that we go into executive session to consider you had the language before. To discuss um, and evaluate a town official. Motion to invite Shannon. Yeah. Yeah, invite <coughs> Shannon to read the yeah. right. form. Do you anticipate the decision coming out of that that the public would be interested in hearing? Should we run around? It's hard to tell. No. Okay, I'm taking it. Um, I don't know whether there will be a decision coming out of this or not. There might be a decision about the petition. Yeah, well, I think but we need to go and, and, I don't know. and figure this out. Because we're getting into personnel issues and you know how that works. Yeah. yeah. So, motion is made second to go into the next session to deal with basically a personnel issue and to invite Shannon medical in with us to represent something that the town clerk has given us. Yeah, not representing the town clerk. Right. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those who are standing, the ayes have it. Will you finish the balance of the agenda also? The only other thing we've got is building security petitions and then investment and banking policy adoption. Which I think you could table. Like I said, as long as I have that by December, Yes. Right. So there's probably going to be nothing after this. We'll tell you what, what else we have. Payors. Payors. Well, yeah, they don't stay here. Thank you very much. It is now 8.47. We are coming out of executive session. Uh, we will be making a decision. Uh, I'm looking for a motion at this point as to what. Can I just wait until my computer warms back up? And make some can do that. You ready? Uh -huh. Carrie, I think you wanted to make a motion. Uh, to uh, read the, uh, the information from the attorney and to respond to the citizens' concerns. So the make motion has been made. Is there a second? Second. And second, and basically to read this letter that we got from our attorney in regards to many complaints that we got from citizens at the last meeting and this meeting as to the petition. So, Carol, you want to read the letter? Sure. For the record. Well, one other thing. To note was that the town clerk was invited to the executive session and either chose not to be here or could not be here. We're not sure which. Okay, this is from Philip Dunn, Shriver, and Carroll, the law offices, and it is from Richard C. Carroll, our town attorney. Dear Shannon, this is uh, September 16, 2016. Dear Shannon, I write in response to the questions posed to me by Gary Delius and Marion Dowling, members of the New Fane Select Board regarding various issues surrounding the town bond vote. The three issues are briefly summarized as follows. One, was it proper for the town clerk to have a petition for reconsideration in her office at the town offices? Two, were public <coughs> monies and or public facilities used improperly by the town clerk in writing and distributing her anonymous letter in support of the town bond? Three, how should the select board address concerns that perhaps all of the voted ballots did not end up in the ballot box at the election? As the select board knows, the town clerk is an elected official. Therefore, the select board has no say in how the town clerk chooses to run the town clerk's office. She is entitled to set her own hours. Under the Vermont statute, she is entitled to hire an assistant town clerk. It is her responsibility as to how documents are to be recorded and indexed. The one thing the select board can control is the salaries of both the town clerk and the assistant town clerk. 
Unless those salaries are set by the town in the town meeting or a special meeting, the select board has the authority to set those salaries. Having said that, there is a clear perception of a conflict of interest if the town clerk has a petition for a revote available for signing in her office, especially for a vote concerning bonds to pay for capital improvements to her office. Residents of the town should have access to the town offices without a perception of undue influence. Although there is nothing in the Vermont statutes that clearly prohibits having petitions located in the town office, no town employee, either elected or hired, should be seen as advocating a petition to reconsider uh, a town vote. Having said that, I do not think the presence of a petition for reconsideration in the town clerk's office invalidates the petition. Assuming the petition has the proper number of signatures, I believe the select board needs to proceed to warn and hold the reconsideration vote. However, I would argue, I would urge the select board to adopt a clear town policy or regulation prohibiting the placement or presence of petitions involving town votes and all other types of political signs and literature on town property, with the exception of perhaps candidate signs outside of the voting areas during the two hours the voting polls are open. I think the clearest policy would, uh, to pro would be to prohibit all petitions, campaign signs, or campaign literature on town property. With respect to the second issue, the town clerk should not be using the town copier or the town computer system to write and copy letters advocating a particular personal position on a town vote. Town property and equipment should be used for town public purposes and not for personal purposes. I understand the town clerk has stated she used her own stamps to send out the letters. However, I also understand that several hundred letters were sent out. That raises the question of whether she used the town copier to make those copies which were then mailed. I would suggest that the select board invite the town clerk to an executive session and ask her if she used the town copier to make those copies. If she did, she should be charged the same rate the public is charged to make a copy in the town office. In addition, I strongly suggest the select board consider adopting another written policy prohibiting the use of town equipment and supplies for personal use by any employee. You may also want to consider as part of that policy a restriction for using the town office space for non-town purposes without written consent by the select board in advance. For example, I do not know if the town allows any groups to use town office space such as nonprofits or other groups that are not conducting town business, but still conducting public business in a sense. If you do, you may simply want to have the policy in place and approve those groups in advance. With respect to the last issue, my understanding is that a particular voter was concerned in hindsight. The ballot may have not been put, placed into the box with the other voted ballots. There is no specific evidence that either the town clerk or any specific member of the Board of Civil Authority failed to place that ballot in the voter, voter box. Rather, it is just uh, their concern in hindsight. It is concerns like this that are one of the reasons why the elections are to be conducted by more than one person and the votes are to be counted by the members of the Board of Civil Authority. The select board may want to visit with the Board of Civil Authority to make sure when the vote for reconsideration is conducted that there are written instructions at the ballot box area instructing the voters to place their voted ballots directly 
into the ballot box themselves. The select board should also make sure the town officials working during the voting are reminded of the proper procedures during an Australian ballot vote. In a nutshell, registered voters identify themselves at the balloting location so they can be confirmed as registered voters. They are given the written ballot. After they fill out the ballot, they again identify themselves so their votes can be confirmed. The voters then place their written ballots directly in the ballot box. So to summarize, the select board should consider two written policies. The first being a prohibition against placing petitions involving town votes, political signs, or political written materials, and the second policy to address the use of town equipment and supplies for personal use. In addition, the select board should meet with the town clerk in executive session to discuss her use of the town office, copier, and paper. If she has used the copier to copy her letters, she should be given a bill for that expense. Lastly, the town should reinforce the proper procedures for the conduct of Australian balloting conducted at the town offices. Please let me know if you have any questions or concerns. Sincerely, Richard C. Carroll, Esquire. Okay, I guess the first issue is the petition, which we understand was turned in when it was voted before the that would be the deadline. Yes, it was. And she has enough signatures on that petition. So it sounds like this board is pretty much, uh, even though it was a direct conflict of interest and it was should never have been done. Doesn't sound like the town has much, or the select board has much to do other than we're going to have to go with that petition for a revote at the general election. But um, we need a motion to do so. Motion to allow the revote at the next town election. General election, right? General election. Yes. It'd be next eight? available. When is it? November 8th. November 8th. Is there a second, second to it? Does it fall within the 60 days? It period? does fall within the 60 okay. days. It only gives you 50 days. It only gives you 50 days? Right. So you're still legal. It's within the 60 days. Oh, okay. You just don't have a lot of time. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you do still have to warn it in the newspaper three times, and you still have to have a public meeting within 10 days of the vote. So. Just one? Or do you have to have two? You just have to have one public meeting, and it has to be within 10 days of the and We can actually just do it at a regular select board meeting. You may. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, motions are made and seconded to uh, act on the petition by having a revote of the original question, question mm -hmm. um, <coughs> at the general election on November 8, 2016, <clears throat> and to warn it three times, you said, and have a information meeting within 10 days of the election. Right, so I have to warn it and then also put it in the newspaper three times, and then I'll figure it out. It's a public hearing, 10 days before, public yeah. hearing. Is there any discussion? I was wondering, did we want to add to that, that we will uh, also ensure that there is written uh, instructions. instructions at the uh, polling place? Mm -hmm. Yes. We can amend it to that. Mm -hmm. The only thing I'd like to say is, um, while we totally respect the right of the voters to make these decisions. We also respect the right of individuals who ask for a revote. And today is the birthday of the Constitution. And um, I think that we're upholding the constitutional rights of all of our citizens by sending this forward, whether we personally agree with it or not. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed or abstaining? I'm willing to oppose it, but it's four to one, so. Now, we need to make another motion, or somebody does, concerning this letter. Um, are we going to follow up on the points he made as far as policy yes, changes? Absolutely. 
So somebody needs to make that a motion. I make the motion that we follow uh, the suggestions that Rich Carroll, the town attorney, had uh, proposals of certain um, behaviors and, res and requirements of what goes on in the town hall and where it goes on. Second to that. I would only like to break it down into the three parts that would be permitted. You're going to have to do a second, motion. and then we yeah. can discuss it. Okay. Second. All right, now we can discuss it. Okay. Um, I would want us to follow up, as Rich Carroll has suggested, with um, the town clerk to be sure there is a transaction with the treasurer to show that the if copies were made on our copier, that those copies were paid for at the citizen's rate. Um, I would also then like to see us develop a policy, um, and these will be written policies, that there is a prohibition, prohibition against placing any position involving town votes, political signs, or political written uh, materials, whatever the state law is, I believe it's 175 feet from town hall. Thirdly, I'd like to make sure that we have a written policy um, that sets um, my glasses on. Uh, second policy to address that town equipment and supplies for personal use is simply not permitted by any town employee, elected or hired. Right. For personal use. So long. So for personal use, yes. Yeah. I second. Everybody good with that? Yeah? Yes. Oh, it's already second? No. Well, we have to just have a second before we went into. Oh, that'd be a amendment to the amendment. original motion? Yeah. That'd be a second to the amendment. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So first, in the... I'm uh, not going to read it all over again, so... No. The discussion on the amendment. All those in favor of the motion and the amendment signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed or abstaining. The ayes have it. The next question is, who would like to go in and speak with Larry about this letter and find out whether we have, whether she's paid for the all the supplies that need to be paid for. Due to a conflict with me in the town clerk, I'm going to accuse myself of that. I think that it would be best if we could meet with her as a group, as Rich had suggested. Maybe we don't have to do it in an executive session, but I... I You'd have to have a special town, a special select board meeting. Which you, would be public. Mm -hmm. could. It couldn't be. It couldn't be during the next meeting. Uh, that's on the away. agenda. That's, that's two. That's two, two or four. three weeks. We need to get these answers. Could, could we do a subgroup committee of the board of two people to meet with her? Yeah, I think at least two people need to be there. Yeah. I'll do it if somebody else comes along. But we were the ones who originally uh, contacted Rich. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll go with you. Okay. So Barry and I will do that together. So Gary and Mary will talk to the town clerk. <coughs> just show her a letter. Mm -hmm. Ask her the questions. Well, just let her know that we had these concerns. She can watch the tape from the last meeting to find out, you know, why we went this way. Mm -hmm. um, and we report back to the rest of us? Yes. At the next meeting. At the next meeting? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't put it over emails, would you? I think it should be. Even if we go into another executive session, the next meeting we can discuss it. So. What else am I missing? I think we do have more items. things on the agenda. Do we want to talk about the partitions? Well, we need to talk about the petitions and the uh, security cameras that yeah. we got grants for. Um, Shannon did apply to VLCT for a grant for the security cameras, which I guess you already knew about. One being in this room, and one being in the next room. And just perhaps, in and one outside to the dumpster, or the roll-off. Perhaps eventually one in the listers? Well, I think the general thing was, we don't need to, because basically they're there for, if we get broke into, we can see who did it. If somebody's in somebody's desk for some reason, I still think it'll show enough so that we can see it. Well, um, even if you put partitions, you'd see somebody going, even right. the mm -hmm. rooms are trying mm -hmm. to get in the rooms. So, so it's I something think that you could see that door. Right. It's something that should have been done a long time ago. It's for uh, uh, safety. 
primarily? Insecurity. I mean, Insecurity. we have the public records here. That's right. right. We have to make sure they're being properly taken care of when so we're not on the premises. We That's basically right. got the grant. We are going to pay, what, 1500 and so on dollars. It's not that much money. Yeah, it's a 50-50 match. The select board is all, <clears throat> let's make this clear, that the select board is all in favor of all this, right? Yes. yes. Okay, just okay. so we know. Then the other thing was petitions. Partitions. No more petitions. Partitions. Yeah, we don't want partitions. <laughs> Somewhere you have a partition I list was, of things. Yeah. Um, what did I do with it? So I had Frank come in and help me measure and do a very quick sketch. Um, of what eight foot high walls would, you know, because these windows don't match up. So we'd have to do a couple little, um, whatever you want to call them. Jobs. That was the word. Exactly the one I was looking for. Mm -hmm. um, so he did that and based on the sketch, he came out with uh, the amount of material needed and just based on his experience went through costs so it's a it's a rough cost estimate of what materials only would cost. and um, how high would these walls go eight feet. eight feet okay the point was brought up that somebody could get a ladder and climb over mm -hmm. but i'm not really sure what they would do when they got to the top because Wait to the camera eight feet so <laughs> kind of a waste to go well, we could do it like elvis did and put glass i top. suppose you could yeah um, we were hoping for maybe just a little airflow to keep going, um, but at, at this point, <laughs> the way volunteers have been treated recently, I don't think we're going to get many of them. So, uh, so what do you suggest? Do you I'm want not sure. to uh, check in to see if you can get somebody to do this and I did, what it's going to cost us for that? Yeah, I did contact the LCT to see if volunteers could do this type of thing, and it is covered under our policy, um, $50,000 coverage for volunteers. They do have an agreement that they would like for people to sign if they do, um, but I think the well of volunteers just dried up, so I'm not really sure who. So you want to look into this some more? Yeah, because the actual money. construction costs is probably. Um, I know back in 2011 we had an estimate for doing this exact thing, um, and it was about $9,500 with labor. So I, I don't know. I think it would have been a great idea with free labor. So, are we looking for a motion tonight, or are we going to put it off? I don't know. Well, I don't think we've got any real thing yet, anyways. You just give us an estimate of what the materials cost. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, you're going to have to get more than that. Yeah. Right. right. Well, the plan was to get a bunch of volunteers together and do it with, you know, just the town purchase the material and volunteers build it. But, um... And, uh, for the uh, police who went home, uh, the reason we are doing this is because there have been missing information, and uh, can you share that a little bit so that it's brought back up and somebody's watching the oh, TV? Oh, yeah. Um, the filing cabinets were tampered with. The My computer was hacked into, and um, there have been, which you know, proven or unproven employees have come to me and let me know that people have been going through my things okay. in my absence. Have there been items missing? There have in the past. It hasn't happened very recently, but okay. yes. I guess the next step is to try to find somebody that will do it and what the price is going to be. Yeah. Are we talking about a contractor or are we talking about volunteers? Well, we had a few volunteers, but um, 
the, the recent uh, perceived attacks on volunteers in this town has made it so that people don't want to volunteer. What recent attacks? The, on the volunteers? Last, the last two meetings have been full of verbal uh, questioning of motives of volunteers, and I don't think that kind of behavior really makes people want to step up mm -hmm. and volunteer anymore. Mm -hmm. I think we need to probably address that um, at some point because that's not what we want to the public to have that perception. Right. So for this particular project, we're it <clears throat> looks like we're looking at hiring somebody who has credentials at building this partition. I think though, before you go too far like this, now we just hired a we just formed a committee. Yeah. I would give this to the committee. Absolutely. Yeah. Let them come back and see they're going to have somebody put it out to bed and get the prices, or they come back and tell us to do it. I mean, that's what we just got them for. I mean, now we're almost going undermining them by doing it if we do it the other way. Well, the other thing is, is that um, it just, it'll be uh, January if we have the building committee try to sit and make a decision as to what and get bids and if that's even something they want to do. And this is something that's even happened before we formed the, the Why will it be meeting. January if, we, if they well, know that this we is don't even to be... Have, we don't even have a meeting planned for the building committee. Right. Um, you know... I mean, what else are you going to do? Are you going to put it up a bit this week? That we no. go by our next meeting? That you got to... Any interested no. contractors come in and give us a price on doing it? Because Shane just well, said there's no volunteers, we, so... At least we would get a price. That's my thinking. And then if we wanted to give the bids or the prices, how much it would cost and the different aspects to the building committee, that makes to me, uh, to me that makes a lot more sense. Or we'll just take care of it ourselves because we do have, again, as you shared, we have a vested interest in the safety and uh, the security of these files and the, the equipment and the records of uh, people who work here. Mm -hmm. So, but, you know, yeah. next thing is, though, is, I mean, I'm, I don't care. I mean, either way, you bid it or not, but now you're looking at a public building with all these different codes, I mean, and all this other kind of stuff. I mean, it ain't just so simple that I think it's building that partition. I mean, you're building something, you got fire codes, you got this. I mean, are you supposed to have firewalls in between each partition now? Mm -hmm. I mean, and it's easy to throw something like that up. They're simple. There's no real code on it. Right. But if you start building a wall in between with a, one door out mm -hmm. and stuff like that, what do you have to have? Do we have to have a sprinkler system over the top of it now? I mean, it's, that's what I'm saying. It might be a lot more involved in it than just, I mean, this looks good. I mean, I wouldn't care. I'd build it myself if that's, what, that's the way to go. But is it that simple? <clears throat> not be. I think that we've just spent a lot of time talking about a building committee. And they can take this on as to whether or not it's, you know, there are other zoning, or I'm sorry, there are other permitting issues which have to be considered like uh, building codes. Uh, and they're probably the best people to take a look at that and to see what codes might apply. So we don't end up building something and have a, a state fire inspector come and say, take it all out. It's illegal. Um, so we would need to notify the uh Building committee right now that they've got a job to do. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which yeah, that, that, I think they, they oh, want I mean, to Frank's do. on it, so I mean he's the one to come up with it. Mm -hmm. Let him right. give it to him tomorrow and let him run with it. You know, if we can put it all together by our next meeting, but fine, right. you know. I just want to clarify who is on the building committee. It, it, we had six and it looks like we now have seven, is that correct? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We added a three to nine. Yep. Yeah. Right. Three names and you have four. Alright, so we're going to notify the building committee to try to have a meeting mm -hmm. as soon as possible to go over the stuff that Shannon just gave us for materials and to look into what we have to do to get this up. As soon as, this, the sooner the better. And Shannon, when are the lights supposed to, the cameras supposed to come up? I'm not sure. They just ordered the parts. So. You don't know how long it, they didn't tell you how long it takes. Because yeah, if, yeah, if those are put up in the meantime. Um, well, they, they, that's that's the important point here is that 
the, all the changes are coordinated. So you don't build up the walls and say, well, now the cameras can't see anything going on in the offices. So you know, we just need to make sure that they're coordinated. Right. But I don't not think those deal. cameras are meant to be babysitters. They're not. No, they're not. Um, no, it's really security. So, I mean, again, you see somebody going to the door. Right. So, I mean. Right. We have two in the firehouse. So it covers the whole apparatus floor. So, do you want to get hold of the building committee? Oh, I think that, I mean, just get a hold of Frank. He's the one who brought this all in. I mean, do you think I'm wrong or what? Frank and Doris, one of the other things. It's just not going to get done. No, but I mean, do you think I'm wrong by doing something like that? It's like, I, I mean, I know it's... damn well because I deal to see the state every day on every freaking job I go on. I mean, just like I had a wedding down here at Maple Valley the other day, the fire warden, the inspector showed up to go through that building before they allow them to have a private wedding there. And I know it's like when you close that up with a locked door on it, you've got a fire problem. Now he's supposed to, he doesn't have nothing for fire rock. He's got sheet rock. I mean, yeah. and I mean now you got partitions. Are they all supposed to be have fire rock in between them with you know two layers of sheet rock? That's what they call on a lot of these buildings now. You got to have two a double layer, you know, yeah. and stuff like that. So I mean, I mean that's what he's got. I mean that's a simple way to do it. It'd be a great way to do it if you could get away with it. But are we going to build it and also they come in and make us tear it down? It would be great because at least we'd get him here. We've tried six or seven times to get him to come here. Well, believe me, when you start construction, he'll be here. <laughs> yes. yeah, right. They're always there. You know, and that's the thing about it. See. Also, I'm just saying, I mean, the additional it's, thing about now, there are rules and regulations from the uh, from Vermont law about contractors and, and or volunteers coming in. So they're going to be much more careful in what they're signing and making sure that they are following codes, I think, as Mike is saying. They're not going to want to sign. Well, I mean, you put anything with a locked door on it like that, one yeah. one way out, mm -hmm. you know, that's a fire thing. You know? No, that's what I'm saying, that if, if these contractors now have to sign when they're doing work for, the, for a state building or a town building and have a you know, have the insurance. I mean, you probably got to make sure that they're doing the right job. Yeah. The then correct they job. have to hire somebody, but I'm just thinking, yeah. I think that. You're I mean, probably right. I know they, they, they're giving rescue make a hard time with Andrew yeah. up there. Bad. All right, so if you see Frank or whatever. Yeah, well, right. we still don't have a chair, so. Yeah, maybe they need to get a meeting together right off yeah. the chair and then. Get organized. But I could think yeah, I'd get a hold of. Uh, our next meeting, they great. Yeah. I think I'd get all the Brian Joss Museum. He doesn't do it anymore for this area. But he can tell me who can. Is yeah, it it's, uh, I know his name. He C? Just, yes. Yeah. These guys inspected me a couple of times. He's reasonable. Now, do you have to have bids on this job? I don't think so. No. I mean, you should get three phone bids, but that's easy. Right. It's kind of like what we're doing with Clover. Right, it's going to be under 5000 So. All right, it's getting late, so we got anything else? We're going to table the other ones on the agenda. Is that what we're doing? There's like two more. And we have to do the payment. Investment and in banking policy adoption. And that was it, I guess. Investment in motion to um, table. Uh, investment policy to the next meeting. Yeah. I'm sure. Is there a second? Second. second. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed or abstaining? The only correspondence we got was VLCT News and the uh, celebrate 40 years of serving. Go back to the future with BCTV, Brattleboro Community TV annual members meeting and 40th anniversary party. When? I knew you were going to ask that. Thursday, October 6th of 2016 at 6 to 8 p.m. annual meeting. 8 to 10, Back to the Future dance party with Peter wow. Miles and the Miles Band. Where? 118 Elliott Street, Brattleboro. RSVP info at brattleboro.tv.org or 257-0888 or just get hold of it. Open to the public. <laughs> Food and drink. Producer awards. Vote on BCTV business. Dance and enjoy. Did I cover it all? The guy did. So there you have it. Thank you, BCTV. I guess we're going to go down to correspondence. Or we're done with correspondence, down to pay orders. Thank you.